This is the story of how in 2022, my family from scratch tackled a raw 10 acre piece of land and began to turn it into a homestead, set the foundation so that it could be homesteaded. That meant clear two acres of pasture. Establish a water source. We now have a full pipe of water flowing out. And get some access going. The priority, find and establish a house site. Potential house site right here. Why are we gonna do this? Well, we eat copious amounts of meat. Oh, Ooh, golden brown. We need to raise more food for our growing family. So we need more pasture to raise those animals. And if you look around, big properties all around us for expansion, not for sale. And if they were, they would be very expensive. So we have to take advantage of every nook and cranny of what we've already got. Before the 100 days began, we had the acreage surveyed and marked around the perimeter. I think that's very important. Here's an aerial view to include our farm, 75 acres in total. This is the parcel we're gonna be focusing on. This is where we currently live. We've currently cultivated this entire six acres plus this six-ish acres over here. We're gonna start by going counterclockwise around the perimeter. We had the surveyors mark it off so you can stand at one ribbon and see the next. What you wanna look for on new land, you wanna explore the perimeter. We wanna look for water. We want to look for slope, 30 degrees or less, which is about right there. That's not too steep, it's the neighbors. This is too steep, it's us. And then I began to explore, and this was a very exciting time because I was discovering things I never knew were there. I was going around the perimeter and then sort of zigzagging back and forth, looking for potential pastures, looking for interesting things, you know, water features, or, or old, I found an old chimney on the property, these kinds of things. There you go. Nook and cranny pasture right there. Well, Grandma's house is really close to this property line. How do the surveys know? Great question, I have no idea. We need to ask them when they get back. Three things of interest right here to sum up what we're looking for. One, looks like there's an old logging road. Two, looks like there's signs of water. There certainly is a water down in that ditch. Is there water in that ditch? Yeah, no. Three, it's pasture over here. And four, they have a cave, so that's just something of interest. Oh my word. There's a creek okay, under there. Definitely oh, there's signs creek of water there. over here. Do you want to get wow. in? Wow, no, I don't want to get in. Can, I can, can, I can, can stick the camera in. phone for, for light? You guys are actually going in? Yeah. Wait, there's no light on there. There it is. It's just not there bright. Is. Okay. Oh, you got a creek? Yeah. Yeah. We have a you creek. can't really see it, but there's a li there used to be a little bit of water down there. And then and then there's up here. It's like a little like home for something, like an animal. This particular area that we were developing was rather unfamiliar and it's new to our family. It's been in it for 30 years as opposed to 90, so it was extra exciting. We are officially entering land I've never walked on. Because I didn't know where the line was. We've okay. gone about halfway on this side of the 18 acres. Do, I? Do we have a nook pasture here? Lots of rocks, yeah. Wow, we have a hideaway pasture, that's for sure. Steep bank there, steep bank right over there. Holy, I like it. Levels off nicely into some mature forest here. Whoa, nice. <laughs> We might be getting close to having something here. I can't believe how much work we had ahead of ourselves. You this really is the did. moment of overwhelm. What? Usable, not us. Unusable, us. Wow, look at this. 
Any of this would be another possible house site. Look through those branches. Oh boy. Another possible site, quite a bit lower down. South facing. I'm wondering if we're getting a little too close to that ridge over there. I hear the generator. Generator runs at noon at our house. Any surprises today, exploring? You feel like we found any surprises? Yeah, road. I would say the fact that there are two logging roads that go across our property back. Mm -hmm. There's several dry spring, dry beds. There's some wet ones. I don't think I found any more pasture than I thought we had. There may be even a hair less, but I go over, over with this impression. There's a lot of work to do. I was very hopeful in the beginning, figured we could probably clear 10 acres. We started up by grandma's house, but pretty soon we figured out it's really hard to get to this stuff because of all the underbrush. The classic permaculture principles of why do the work if you can have an animal do the work for you. We're using sheep to underbrush it so that then we can get in there. A lot of that can just be mowed, but stuff like that, we're gonna have to get in and work up. That's very workable. That's because the sheep have been in there underbrushing. This, just right next door, is not very workable. You could get in there to come saw this stuff out. You're gonna have to contend with all this annoying underbrush. Or we can give the sheep something to eat, and then it looks like that. And it's a lot easier to get at. So we need to put them to work where we need them. What do you say we can capture this and then all this past that big brush pile. We'll give them a huge paddock. That's fine. So soon, maybe today, we start coming in after the sheep have cleared and start working stuff up. Sheep, 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 sheep. We're going to move out of the Go on. The name of the game is Harvest the small stuff first, small to large. The reason I go against that is because you'll just say, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, and then 100 days is coming, it's not done. <laughs> this is this is true. So I think we should do it every time a sheep moves, we take the clear the whole thing. Yeah, like, or we try to. We moved the sheep out, Rebecca. That could just be our first paddock to do, which is great. But we need to get the little stuff first, which means the mower, okay. and then the loppers, and then the chainsaw. They're going at it. The oak leaves, the popular leaves. It's making it workable. Wow though, just a mow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Are you excited? We're yeah. doing this. Yeah. You could start lopping. Okay. And I could start chainsawing. Good job. I'm excited. You excited? Yeah. Want me to be doing? I don't yep. even know. Lopping everything you can. Doing it. Josiah, you can come in and pile this brush she's getting. 30 minutes. You want to see what we can get with the chainsaw? Yeah. How about this strip right here? Uh -huh. What do you think? Yeah. Here's before, and then I'll do an after. This root is super tricky because it expands out like this. It's not straight up and down. It's hard to cut in there. That's going to be a tricky one. Other than that, it went pretty smooth. We were able to get down real low on these. They will sprout back, but the sheep will keep eating them and we'll keep mowing. And as long as we can get the mower in here, see, this will sprout back. The sheep will eat it. And we can get, I cut this down low enough to where the mower could get through. Eventually it will die and rot in its place. These bigger ones, I cut down up top. I fell them. And then there's not nearly as much weight and pressure on this as I then work up the stump. Yes, I cut it twice, but it's a lot easier. Here's before and this is after. <laughs> They've done it. They've done it. 
We can easily get in there, Birdo. Look. They're crushing it. The cool thing is, we'll go inside. They'll still be out here working. We ran, ran both chainsaws out of fuel. We didn't bring fuel. Gosh, guys, we got to bring fuel next time. Because we could go another 10, 20 minutes. We got twice as much brush as we did yesterday. So you cut six trees. Funny, funny guy. The stump we shortened up earlier, though, that was a big, that was a big accomplishment. That was a third of our fuel right there, probably. Look at that thing. I just can't quit looking at this. We did that, guys. We did that. And yeah. you guys worked hard. The sheep were a fantastic tool for clearing land, but we moved from one problem to the next, and our next problem was, what are we gonna do with these stumps? We're gonna try this tree grubber. Hmm, this is interesting looking. All right, Jonah finished putting it together. Thank you so much, Jonah. Okay, there we go. So, the mower would get this, yes, but this would get it by the roots. That's some root. Okay, so it'll get little trees. No sponsors so that we can well, we bad yeah. review if we need to. Yeah, this is, I mean, what are we doing? Like, you could have I mean, just pulled that out by hand. There you go. I mean, yeah, see, it's just stripping that. Nope, I'm calling it. Nope. Nope, it slips. It wouldn't pull the bigger stuff. It's slipping on the little stuff. It gets seems like you have to get it just right. And it's not really that fun to operate. So, they do make another kind that you hook to a tractor that has good reviews. This one kind of had mixed reviews on Amazon, so. I see you've been opening my packages. Give me a leg. Look how really heavy hurt. duty. You hook, you hook this to the tractor, the chain. With the chain, and then that's, you and then open it. it. As you pull, yeah, you open that, put that around the tree. And then as this pulls, it just makes it tighter and tighter on the tree. Yeah. This one, unlike the stick yeah. one, has good good uh, ratings. Yeah. How about this? Tomorrow we try to pull some of these trees out by the roots. We've got this tree pulling tool. We're gonna try today. If you put this on the tree, hook this to the chain, hook to the tractor, pull it up. Let's start with this tree. Yeah. That's, a lot of That's probably a smack. Let's come in here. You saw down the trees, and then you hook that up and try to pull it out. So let's do this patch of smaller trees. Okay, that'll be the goal. We are trucking now. But yesterday I was wondering, should we really be doing this? Like I could hire a machine, they would do this in 15 minutes. But then I saw those guys working so hard and I thought we're doing this together. We're building this together and that, that, that's just priceless. What we're gonna try is to pull these up with the tractor. I kind of doubt that thing will get this big old root out. If it doesn't, we have to saw it down. Saw it to the bottom and it just sprouts back, that's the problem. So we have to keep it mowed, we have to keep the animals in it for sure. And eventually it will die, so it's not a huge problem. It mines minerals from deep below and brings them up to their leaves and then when the animals eat that, they get mineralized, so it's not terrible. My hunch is it'll probably pull up the size of that one. Well, you go right for the big one, huh? You think it'll pull that one up? Look at that root system. <laughs> we can always try. I think try. there's no way, but certainly we can try.
But now we have a big hole. I think it could be easily raked over. Look. Look at what this thing pulled out. I was surprised. I'm learning I need to pull up and out and it breaks off the roots like that. That's a much better pull. Doesn't uproot the ground so much. It's a nice seed disturbance anyway too and now that they can get sun this will grow a patch of grass. It just broke off the mountain laurels so we're gonna have to saw them down. It broke the chain and the back wheels of the Kubota were getting left up. What the heck? Why don't we just get an excavator? Ten times easier. Yeah. Let's go. Well then we're not building a legacy together, are we? Oh really? Big Daddy had a chain. Yeah, we'll pull the tractor over before we break that chain, won't we? Uh-oh. These are not stronger than our other chain, I'm pretty sure. These clips. Did we just destroy that? Yeah. I'm not impressed with that. Why aren't we just wrapping a chain around it like we used to do when I was a kid? Totally destroyed these links. Look at that link all warped. Maybe what we should do with this 20 minutes is go find our big chain. It bent this thing. This thing was heavy duty. Well, here's what you do with a chain. You wrap it around a couple of times. And it does catch. It does catch. We maybe not. We maybe not saw it so low to the ground, we may have it a little longer. But once once you pull on this, they don't catch. Watch, we could do this. We could do this right now. We are not gonna pull roots up like that. I'm gonna show you guys why in a second. I do not like this result at all. Here's what I don't like about it. Although it does get the roots out and this tree is not gonna grow back. Look how much soil on that. Look how much organic matter is there. And that's the best stuff. That's topsoil. That's the black stuff, see? Black. Not black, clay. You can see the layer of topsoil here. That's the soil that the forest has built. And we've just pulled it up. Now we can rake this over and smooth this out. Then we have the disturbance from the tractor. Another root job there. Digging down into the clay. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work with nature. That stump does not want to be pulled up. And I've cut it so close to the ground, a mower could get over that. So if it sprouts and the animals don't eat it, we're mowing behind the animals and we knock it down. And you, you cut that off a number of times and it does eventually kill it and then it rots. I've already started to do it here. We could bevel the edges so that it doesn't get caught in the, on the mower decking or anything like that. This guy, maybe two inches up right here surface over there so yeah you just take our saw and bevel it it's gonna be a lot easier than pulling it up yeah I just don't like the looks of that I just tore it up we want to work with nature not against sometimes it's tempting because we have the machines to do so and there's a time for it there's certainly a time for it but not in this case may change my mind tomorrow but not in this case today you guys want me to show you what happens to a stump see all these sprouts coming out of it 
Yeah, that's what happens. This is a case in point. So this stump has been cut, it's coppiced, and you can see the leaves up here, that's where the sheep haven't been able to reach. But the sheep eating these leaves, it's actually a good thing, because these roots are deep down and they're bringing up the minerals, they're mining minerals. And so when the sheep eat this, this leaf, they're getting mineralized. So I think keeping the stumps in is actually, could be part of our mineral program. This, there's just something very satisfying. Sure, I could get a machine, but there's something very satisfying about us working this land and now us looking at our, our finished artwork. Then I had this idea, what if we built our house from wood from the land? And then, I don't know where I got this idea from, what, what if we did it with a horse logger? So I, so I contacted this guy in North Carolina who ended up being a forestry consultant and had him out to look at our forests. Well, he's not bringing us horses, but he's coming tomorrow. We're gonna talk about it. His shtick is to harvest wood off the farm to build the homestead house. We have our designer coming tomorrow too, and we're gonna meet, we're gonna look at lumber, and we're gonna see if this is a thing, because wouldn't that be cool to do a lot of this clearing with draft horses? It's a possible house site here. Do you wanna walk up that way, or we can walk up this way, or both? Yeah, both, we'll do both. Okay. My job is to take stock of your forest resources. Okay. And to see how those and inform, you know, a sustainable ecological building project. Nice. So, you know, without sacrificing, so it's, it's only ecological if it doesn't sacrifice a quality forest. The uh, silvicultural standpoint, um, and silvic culture meaning the art and science of growing a forest, mm. um, as opposed to agriculture, mm -hmm. um, not opposed, but in distinct from agriculture. With silviculture, you're trying to keep a forest. Yeah. Right? You're trying to, in some form, right? The idea is that they're still growing trees and trees that are regenerating. In my opinion, there's also value in kind of keeping it mm -hmm. more or less like it is, say, maybe putting in a home site or, you know, some more woodland type, you know, uh, activities, say, like cultivating shiitake mushrooms. In terms of things you want to, like, so that we could saw up and build with, based on the map and based on what I see here, it might be that we would get some wood here for certain things, but as far as framing something up, probably need to find some pine on the other side of the We'll go to the other side. We exhausted our search on the new side across the creek. Found a lot of cabinet, a lot of flooring, not so much timber framing. So we're over here on the, the old side looking for pine. You've got a similar forest really, except it's a little more a little more open, a little less rhododendron, but there's still some. Obviously, the thing I didn't see across the creek that you have here um, is a yellow pine component. And is this a yellow pine right behind you? Yeah. That's something I would encourage you to keep, actually, and not cut. Can your horse pull out a big old log like that? Oh, yes, sir. Really? Dang. How, how wide was that? Horse is, not horse. Horse is. How, how, how wide is that? You measured it. It's about 20 inches, TBH, 20. What's your horse's max, both of them together? It just depends on the grade, it depends on the species, what time of year it is, whether or not they're feeling good or not. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they can pull a 16 foot log out of that tree. Wow, it's a gigantic tree. It's gonna be heavy. It's cool to have Ian here because he, you, you know, he would look for white pine, but he's saying you have not, we don't have a lot of white pine. So we do have a lot of tulip, may tulip poplar. So we would use that instead, which is super cool because he's, he's looking at the land and what we have and our needs and marrying those. That consultation was worth its weight in gold. Here's what we learned. Our future house site might not even be on the same side of creek or plot that we had initially thought. Well, this could be a hole in our plot. When we were back at the, that pond, they started eyeing that slope, which is on the side we're currently on. Actually, it's on the other side of the road. They're thinking, well, that's your, that's your house site. <laughs> hole in the plot. We're trying to develop this side for the 100 days of building a homestead. 
so if we're going over there, we would be shifting our focus in a different direction. Of course, it'd be the same concept. Raw land, clearing ourselves. So it's not that much different. At first, I want to get frustrated about the changes, but actually, it's actually good. I mean, we're what does permaculture teach us? Work with nature rather than against. So we're looking at slopes. We're looking at access. It's a lot easier to access that place of, over there. You know, it's not so steep to get some of, to the, to some of those more ideal places. It's interesting. It's it's it changed our plans a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a different house. Not in a bad way. Maybe. We decided on a timber frame home. Our hearts sang when we discovered it. Ian introduced us to that. So how did he change your plans for you? Well, it's well, it's a different type of house, which I'm totally okay with. Okay, so it's timber, timber frame. frame. Dan, can you pull up a timber frame shot? Because I don't understand. It's big beams. It's so beautiful. It's so so they harvest the wood from Our farm wood. for the timber yeah. frame. Uh, there'll be accents with it inside the house, right? And it's perfect for passive solar because you can do thick insulation with it because they're like six, eight inches thick. And we learned that disappointingly, horse logging wasn't going to happen during the hundred days. He doesn't cut the wood till February. I know, which is the sap and stuff, and then it'll be ready to be built by June, which puts us on time. But it'll be after the hundred days. I was hoping to get these horses during this hundred days. But we need content after the hundred days too, so. Mm -hmm. More track loaders and excavators. Uh, that's what he's voting for. This caused me to feel uncertain. Now, if this could be our possible house site across the creek in a whole different spot, am I wasting time clearing over here around grandma's? Are we building over there on that side of the street? Or are we building over there on that side of the creek? Another permaculture principle is to cultivate around your house, zone zero. Where we're cultivating and clearing that the house isn't gonna be over there, we're misdirected. Not that it would be a bad, a terrible thing. It's just that you would want to develop closer to the house and expand from there. It's actually why you want to get experts like Ian involved. You plow on ahead and you think, oh, I know everything. And you don't invest in some expertise. You could do something stupid, like put a homestead house in the wrong total unideal place you know i'm like do i continue clearing pasture up there yes i think i do i had this realization that well we have sheep up there to keep away from um uh, nacho and we could do that with heifers too so it's kind of handy to have a you know our pasture down here and no no matter where the house ends up but it's also handy to have pasture up there a distance away to keep certain animals separated from each other. That's making me feel better about the work today, even though we're more uncertain than we were yesterday about where our house is going. I think we were introduced to timber framing yesterday. I, I think we knew about it. But I feel like I knew about it. There's a house that I you showed. Have seen show. timber frame? Yeah, yeah but I, I really... I making the connection. I didn't realize you Oh, look, there, that there's a good one. Pull that one up so people can see one. the... Frame. That's what well, it doesn't have to be so ornate and I don't know if I necessarily want it so ornate like it's very Like I like the pegs and all that but like this little finial like I don't know if I need that and these all these finial, extra wow. finial that would be more I Mean maybe not exactly like that, but I know what you mean Yeah, see that's nice mm -hmm. We had our eyes on a homestead across the creek and that's where we're clearing came over here with Ian and we're like, oh wait, this is nice over here. Well, we were coming over here to look for different types of wood. Yeah. For the house. Yeah. And he's like, maybe you should build over here. We are. I am okay with. Are totally. you? Yeah. Are you? And the reason, well, the house is the most important thing when you think, because everything then revolves around it. This pond though, we are clearing it up and cleaning it up. Yes. So that we can make more use of it. One thing Ian was saying is we're gonna get old and we're gonna want access. This is pretty accessed. Here's our farm. Here's a pond. We have this guy coming November 2nd. Do I need to focus my energies on clearing at possible house sites? That's probably what I need to be doing. 
Not not yet clearing pasture, but clearing possible house sites. I kind of feel like we should shift our homestead build focus onto this side. That's why it's so important to me to figure out where we're going to build a house because I want to build out from there, not be clearing way up in Timbunk 2. The, the idea is to cultivate what's in front of your yard what's and expand out. That's why it's so important to have a good idea where the house is going to be. And what's neat about doing over here is we have so much cultivated over here already. It's a more direct expansion. Although we need across the creek too for the, for the breeding program and for additional pasture. But it would only make sense to develop what would be outside your door first. Right here. Be able to see the pond, be able to see pasture. You can see the, the, the pole barn blocks the road. We could keep this forest from here over. And look over here across the creek where we've been looking. It's already dark. We find the sun and we center ourselves to it and everything else expands from there. Sun's still setting over there on that. That's where the house would be. About right there. We are across the creek. We keep going back and forth. I don't think that's incompetence. I think that's just being diligent. It's not like, oh, we decided over there. No, we haven't decided yet. Big Daddy's house. This is like the original spot over there and down lower. We came there with Austin. But let me show you, their line is closer than we thought, Rebecca. See the ribbon right there? You get to a spot, you observe the, the corners. The line is like right here. You have to be off the line a certain amount of feet. And could they potentially develop that in 50 years? I don't know. The neighbor. Since the graders already happened to be coming, we had already lined them up a long time ago to come and do work on our pond over where this other potential house site was, I just began to shift our focus over there. Got the unsexy pile of brush out of the way. Barely doing any cutting down. Certainly didn't cut down a tree. Now we're gonna start having some fun. Just keep the saw blade in front of you. Never saw towards your foot. Always be aware of who's around. That you, that you have protected gear on. They don't. So just kind of be away from us. We're progressing well. Josiah's going at it. Ooh, look at that view already. But what's going to look like from up here? Let's get some more before and after. Let's stand right here. Before, after. I'll come back here in a minute and I'll do that before and after sequence. And we'll have a view. All right, let's clean around the pond too so that we can actually see the pond directly. Let's do a before and after here. Before. After. Hey, the blue barrel floating around is a nice addition. Before. After. You seeing the possibilities? Yep. Look at that. This could be our, uh, our backyard one day. Still got more to clear this way, but can you see it? Can you see a glimpse at the glory? It's going to be real nice.
branches in the pond so that he can actually get out there in it. That's smart. He didn't get stuck. smokes we got so much done with that piece of equipment right over there it's absolutely incredible we've dug this pond probably 12 feet down in the middle mucked the branch it, like it looks like a totally different place doesn't it we had to say goodbye to cubby our beloved tractor that was a Kubota deal that had come to an end it left us in a bit of a pickle because it left us without a quality machine and did start opening up in discussion for what is the future of machines on the Holler Homestead. We're about to be without a critical machine today. It's leaving. The implements are already all gone. We gotta do one last thing on, on old uh, Cubby here. Well, that was the last ride on old Cubby. Now we're in a bit of an acute bind. We need a big machine to be able to lift 2,000 pounds of feed. A big tractor will move 2,000 pounds. A tractor will also hay, which we hope is in our future. But let me share with you my idea. This is Lucky. Do you guys remember Lucky? My dad's tractor he bought brand new like 30 something years ago. Hence name, because Lucky only started half the time. Battery's gone. I texted Mark, our mechanic, and asked, what do you think it would take to get Lucky going? It turns out it wasn't that much, so I said, let's do it. Problem is that we were using these attachments to the bucket to move and unload feet. Lucky couldn't do 2,000 pounds though, so we ordered it in a 1,000 pound tote, but the companies kept t stacking those totes on top of each other, and it gets super sketchy putting the weight way out there on the end of a bucket and I don't think this has an option I'm pretty sure it doesn't to put forks on it like Cubby did then I asked Mark could Lucky do hay equipment and I knew Lucky would in a pinch move the milk sled although we want to make the milk sled lighter and not even need a tractor in the first place so we'll have the tractor for rolling over pasture and having the PTO for hay equipment what if we got an extremely multi-purpose machine that isn't even a tractor we'll use Lucky for our tractor thing and then we get a track loader for lifting the 2,000 pounds. Wouldn't the track loader help us in a very significant way in this 100 days of building a homestead and get us caught up? I don't know, it makes me nervous because it would be our biggest farm purchase ever. We calculated it up. The graders are about $6,000 an acre to clear. To do 10 acres, which we won't have 10 acres to clear in that 10 acres, but over time, we've probably got 10, 15 acres. Well, 10 acres would be $60,000. In the end, I have 15 to 20 acres to clear over time. Well, golly, that's $120,000. Brand new track loader, 70. So you almost pays for itself just with the 10 acre homestead project. And the cool thing about is if we get a machine and do it ourselves, we have something at the end of the clearing of those acres. If you pay somebody else to do it, it's done and it's good, but that's it. If we did more ourselves and save some money and have not pay someone, and we get the, a machine at the end, that's a win-win, even though it's a big investment. After just a couple of weeks building the homestead, I was feeling scattered unorganized and behind. Plus, we had several distractions along the way. This is the sicker one. Okay. I can't even move her head. Were they in there? No, I put them in there. 
to get away from the ch other chickens. Okay, let's put them out because they're going to just poop this up like crazy. She, j she can't even barely move. Oh yeah, she's disoriented, isn't she? How are these guys doing? They're clearing a lot. We're going to watch it, okay? If people keep dropping dead, we'll have to do something. Just the transition. Just something else going on. That one could have gotten, maybe got by the goose. See, everybody else looks all right. I think the biggest challenge to developing this new land is the current land we're on. We have a thriving homestead, which needs a lot of attention. Yeah, we can't be cutting five trees a day. We'll never get done in these these 100 days. My thought is we'll get into a better groove. There'll be less and less going on the farm as the winter approaches. Like for example, we have an hour now extra after doing business work. We could go clear more. Josiah wants to go clear more. Look at Lily reading under the tree. I don't hate to bother that. Hey, when you're done, honey, come garden with us. If it's not busyness, you know, we're going into the winter, so we're gonna have other props. Tomorrow, it's gonna be 25 degrees in the morning. Today, I'd like to continue working on putting this fall garden to rest, and then we can at least get the gardening behind us. The other thing that's stressing me out is, I wanna be on this, well, one, to be clearing our homestead, but two, to get content for you guys. I don't quite have enough time before training to get started, but we could uh, queue it all up, couldn't we? It's tempting to not show you guys these obstacles because it feels like, oh, if I just want to cut down some trees, I should just show that. But that's beside the point, I think. It's the obstacles that make this, this so special and intriguing, right? And it's what you deal with too. Everybody's got an obstacle of some sort and everybody's got a goal. It's about overcoming those that make the reward. So if the reward was easy, it wouldn't be a reward. It would be a gift. And many times something that we earn is more special and meaningful than something that we're given. This has to be fought for. Could you not guys, it's 10.30. I'm ready to go to the next thing. And Lily says the milk has busted in the cooler. I am not. That's probably a 20 minute job. Okay, yeah, that's lucky. I'm thinking it's cutting into my sawing time. Maybe I'll do editing now and then straight up saw in the afternoon, but I don't know. Maybe we don't have to do that because this might not take us that long. It's supposed to be a 44% chance of rain today. That's partly why I want to get the outside work done first. Actually, we have an hour and a half. I wanted to go clear, but look at this. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, it happened yesterday. It also happened today. Look at this. This is our milk cooler. It's in the cold room. Look at this. A child must have thrown a jar in there and it busted. As this doesn't happen that often. And I'm asking myself, my stick is, enjoy the process, enjoy the process. How do I enjoy this? Oh, we've probably, an hour and a half is gonna be so, it's so good. It's a perfect amount of time to like, do a chainsaw project. Here are the real obstacles in the way of the goal. <laughs> this year. With all those obstacles in the way, I felt like we really need to hunker down, really get focused, aim for our house site, and then to begin work from there. Rebecca and I had identified three potential ones. Site number one, by grandma's. Site number two, our favorite on the new to our family, 30 years, parcel across the creek. Site number three, across the road in a whole completely different area above the pond. We brought in a passive solar expert to help us decide and get us on a clear path, decide what would be the best house site and hopefully would save us a lot of trouble. The passive solar consultant's coming today. Hopefully it's not too late, he's coming like, like four. Hopefully he could tell us, is that ridge too close? There's a ridge over there, the sun sets there. And I'm pretty sure we need the sun from 10 to three. With the solar passive expert coming, we decided to clear around these potential sites, all of them, so that he would have a better idea 
of which one would be best. Potential house site right here across the creek. The advantage is I don't think we'll see the I don't think you can see the public road. It's it's an amazing view. All these spots are high enough up out of the valley, 50 feet from the bottom valley, out of the frost pocket. Are we just gonna cut all these down? I think so, this is so little, this is chainsaw territory. Can we give ourselves a better vision of what this could be by clearing a lot of this? So how much kids do you think we can do? You think we can get 50 foot down if we just go nuts? Yeah. Just wondering where the brush pile goes? We should probably start down the hill and come up. And then that way she's dragging the brush downhill. I just feel like we have a mission, we have a vision, and I'm feeling so satisfied in our work. And we're doing it ourselves. Look what we did. Let this be the after shot. Dan rolled the before shot. So this is before we started working. Our goal is to the road of Dendron, over to this road. All this from where Josiah is. And this will give us an idea of what kind of silvo pasture view we're looking at. Let this be the after shot. So we'll call this spot number one. Is that kind of the pasture? In front of the... No, right Grandma's, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, he's gonna like this spot the best. But is it the if he's already talking about being close to utilities. Well, there's already utilities established there. There's already a well over there. And actually we're downhill from that. We're downhill from those resources too, Rebecca. The well and whatnot. Okay, spot number one. Oh, this is beautiful already. So this would look over our entire farm. Mm-hmm. Well, why do you say this is beautiful? Just, well, if you, from as long as you can take down these pine trees, where's yeah. the property line? Yeah, this is the problem. So, the, you see that orange line? We're gonna try to buy it. To there? Buy some yeah, so for passive solar, we can't clear those trees. So that's, but that's but that's one of our options is that we want to, if you're like, this is the best this guy out of spot. all of them, <laughs> then we awesome. want to, we want to, Go and talk to her and see if we pay yeah, like there, ridiculous. There may, like there, an acre yeah. If she'll do that. Yeah. She, there may be a possibility acres. to get an acre or two right Or maybe she'll let you Or would she be open to let out. you taking some of the yeah. Oh, that's out. true. If she won't yeah. let us sell anything, she but could But wouldn't we want to, I mean, because if the line's right here, don't you have to be like so far away from the line are, and stuff? There are setbacks. Um, so, you just have to find out how does that work? He's already done. Brian's already done. I mean, like, this as is long as you can take out the pines, because those, those pines will kill you. South is this Oh, yeah. Way. Because they're, they don't drop. Okay, south is this way, Rebecca. It's too much shading. Okay. So let's... You can get away with it. Right. But the, the evergreens, it's, it's, gonna be it's a too problem. much shade. The slope is good here. You got so. plenty of room. I mean, you're kind of on a ridge knoll, so you can shed the water both directions. You don't have no, to worry about drainage. That's a good drainage. insight. I don't think you could scoot it up high enough to yeah. get past this pine shade, though. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's our hiccup here. Let's go to spot number two. Spot number two, where we cleared this morning. The reason it appeals to us is it's Actually, it's further off the road. A little more this way. Mm -hmm. It's a little more nooked in here. Yeah. yeah, I would think the driveway yeah, would, would meander to our line and then cut down. Yeah. My concern, though, and that's why we have you here. I don't. I was thinking it faced more this way for south, but it doesn't. It's this way. So we're pretty. We're pretty. We're pretty good. Yeah. I and mean, we have control of right? all of this, so we can take out what we want. Yeah, and I don't. You probably wouldn't yeah. have to take out anything. I mean, and this would be just stuff of the house. We're right. we're taking it out for our pastures, but this would be just. If you all but the way down, definitely uh, more expensive to develop to get up here. Uh -huh. Yeah, building that road up here, the fa the foundation, mm -hmm. the driveway, more of a steep, the yeah. pad. We're gonna do a basement regardless, but this right. would yeah. be um, more of a basement. You know where? Right. What right. would you do for a basement over at spot number one? We just dig down. We would just do. You'd have to dig or down a little more bit more. Slope. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we're here. Uh -huh. You, you know, you just dig into the side like of the mountain. Some retaining walls on, on right. the sides. Right, right. As far as solar exposure, you think we're good here at the west? Look at west. 
It's a ridge. Pretty yeah. close. It's the hardest part of the business to price. Okay. It's the dirt work. And okay. The road building. Yeah, and the driveway. I mean, but I, I mean, it could be. It, it depends how good of a job the, the grader does with the road, mm -hmm. how wide you're making it. We're okay. The culverts. Right. But um. We have some pretty great graders that we are we work with pretty regularly, and for two days they're what like two or three thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I bet it'd be fifty thousand more. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the site though, as long as we're we're seeing the south, we're good. You're not too concerned about the, the western sun get getting gone too soon. No, you don't want western sun. Oh. Okay. What do you, you want? Don't. Eastern. I mean, you want you want south and maybe a little south oh. southeast for really? your for your south. I, windows. I was thinking you had you wanted to heat it up going right. into the evening. No. Okay. Cause you'll, well, that's why we have you here. Yeah, I know. Cause we, I mean, we've read the books, but it's, there's still like a lack of like. A application, I guess, is what you yeah. could call it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of old school knowledge out there too. Yeah. It's uh, kind of conflicting with. Yeah. So you, best okay, cases, so you don't yeah, have to worry about that. I'd, I'd have, yeah, you generally want to avoid western sun. <laughs> okay. Put your put your covered porches over there. Maybe we'll flop then the house, yeah. Austin, because we have the covered right, porch right on, the the east side. on the east side. Yeah. Really yeah. In this this situation and put the covered porch yeah, on the west side. Okay. It might make sense more from the, for the driveway approach. Yeah. Also. But uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't get too concerned about west east versus the covered porch. More about how it looks when you're approaching it and if it's okay. jiving with. Well, the I mean, if we're if nice. we're approaching it from this way, anyways, it would be better that the garage is on this mm -hmm. side. What, what about this grid? spot for utilities? I mean, it's more than more than what twice as expensive there? as down yeah. there. I would think. Okay. What about going off grid? That's what he says. But okay, so when he says off grid, like no, 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 we're not roughing it either. I, I don't want to rough it. Like I need my right. water. I need hot water. I need yeah. um, a dryer to dry my clothes. <laughs> but mm -hmm. as a passive solar guy, you like to see people go off grid, or is it overrated? It's really hard. Um, well, see, and I don't want to do really hard. I'm not interested. It's really, in really hard, hard and really expensive. <laughs> for, you got to cut a house this size. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it takes a long time to recoup the say to, to recoup the cost and yeah. savings. And you got to be really miserly. Watch every kilowatt hour. Won't passive solar help us not need so much grid in the first place? It, it will. will, but in the grand scheme of things, you're not gonna get rid of. You're not going to get off the grid well, with passive solar. Yeah, no. I mean. Now, I now heat. We are heating with wood with a wood boiler. We love our wood boiler. Now that makes that can make a difference. In summary, this place is nice and quiet. Yeah. It's doable. It's the driveway is going to be more expensive. It's going to be more expensive for driveway and electricity. We're going to have to run power say? underneath. Yeah. yeah. These would just and because about, we're like, further from the existing. Like, but we're further. Like, that's another. You're going to have to talk to a contract or Seth about that. Okay. Yeah. Get up here on slopes and stuff. Septic can be more challenging mm -hmm. uh, and that's it looks like you got plenty of room to work with though let's just say nice, we do challenging if you can lot. take those trees down you can have a nice mm -hmm. wide field it's yeah. it's really about the, okay. the area you have for your uh leech field yeah, okay. Okay. Right. but mm -hmm. yeah they, they will look at how good the ground the perks too and it. just from the initial look it doesn't look great what are you looking for how percolated it is it like kind of looks clay bungee less clay yeah like if you dug a hole it. and pour water in it and it holds the water for a long time no that problem. yeah you want it to drain you quick to... this is great... spot number three Ooh. we're a little close to the road a little close to the activities here we are close to the pond which is good oh we could just so you know brian we can that road we kind of cut up this way, but it mm -hmm. could meander. We can meet, yeah. And then come this to, way. It doesn't now. have, it's not gonna be this. Not in front, right in front of no, the house. No, 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 no straight, we're not we could go it. behind the house. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the rough area of the well, house. This is a possible spot. I mean, anywhere, like it's- What he got? Here's the problem over all. here, maybe. This is south, Brian. Yep. Now you can go 20 degrees off south, can't you? Or is that another one of those? Uh, yeah, the problem 20 is getting, getting to be a lot, but um, it looks like it wants to be southwest is the problem. That mm -hmm. is. This is southwest. Yeah. It is? I thought that was southwest. I that is southwest. I going 20 degrees to the southeast than west. Oh. Ah. I had that backwards. I love it because the pond's here, but at the same time... You can keep that pond sacred and yeah. visit it. Kind of get away. 
If I was building a house here, I'd probably still include the passive solar because I think it'd probably be worth it here. But yeah, it's definitely the worst of the three Okay. for exposure. Let's go hike up, see if that changes yeah, anything. If we go higher up, we also get more privacy. We have to meander the road a little bit more. Well, a lot more. All right then, spot number four. This is further up. But it's going to be more expensive. Bigger driveway, more it privacy. Is. It continues to give more, more expensive. So yeah, then like south, right probably right there. here. Yeah, I mean, it's like... You basically just gain a little bit of elevation to where we're... So uh, higher, our other house bridge. sites, Rebecca, they're naturally facing... Well, they're facing south. And if you face this house south, we're not really looking at anything. Yeah. Here, we'd have to take that out we'd for have this. To yeah, all, that like big all one and all those little ones. Well, I mean, I think all those pines are coming out anyways because we're going to pasture this. Okay. So <clears throat> we've been kind of clearing in several different areas because we want to pasture as much of our forest as we can. But that means it's going to be Silvo, so we're not taking everything. And you're saying if we turn it 20 degrees, well, 20 degrees is a lot from south. Yeah, and you're getting pretty, it's starting to face west. west. There. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I don't mind really late it's day it's really west through that saddle. I, well, I mean, in the summertime, it's probably starting to go over there more. It is. Um, okay, and you're seeing this. Is that the sign right yeah, there? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Okay, good. Infrastructure and logistics, this is getting a little more challenging. It's probably the most challenging lot as far as getting a, a driveway to mesh with the, mm -hmm, with the house pad, safe. I think. Mm -hmm. Just because it's so steep agree, right yeah. here on yeah. this side. How do you feel about what he's saying? Yeah. I think I like spot number two because you, you don't see the road. I do like number two. It feels uh, very We private. don't have to count on the neighbor. I mean, we can still approach the neighbor and see and then yeah. probably come down to spot one or two. Right now, yeah, two's winning. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have to what approach her. We would, well, I don't feel like unless we actually were able to purchase that land from her, I don't think spot one's going to work. Yeah. And see, that's right there by that house. Spot two gives yeah. some separation from everything. Maybe even pull it more over onto this. Yeah, yeah. Ridge let's look here. at this. This is a more gradual slope. You got more space to do the driveway here. You could maybe do the garage like that and, and the house it, this way. We're not gonna be looking at much because we're gonna keep a barrier between us and the, but I'm okay with that. the the cabin. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't care either one. It doesn't bother yeah. me any. Okay. So we just, well, our next idea was to sit down and do pros and cons of everything. Yeah, that's what we need to do. In my opinion, I, I, I'm liking number two the best. Yeah. At least we know where to focus building this yeah. 10 acre, you know, yeah. clearing the 10 acres. Well, now we're on that side. At least we know what 10 acres <laughs> we're going to be cultivating for this 100 days of building a homestead. We're heading across the creek, y'all. Day 18. We know which side of the creek we're on. Does that surprise you? Mm -hmm. surprise I do. I'm surprised thought, where we're at. I thought he was going to like that. Mm -hmm. But I was mistaken on wanting western sun. Yep. But that makes sense. Just heats it up, makes it hot. I mean, over there we're going to clear because we're going to have a pasture. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. baby. None of it was in vain. But I feel like for this 100 day goal, we now have a. Mm -hmm. To make our spot a more clear to, to focus well, on. And honestly, we're gonna look down on those wood sheds that we have down there and stuff like that. I mean, that's gonna come down. Yeah. But um. Yeah, we can beautify them and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. Today was a huge win, the biggest win so far in the hundred days. Now we're gonna be super focused. We can have a map. We can draw what's been done and what hasn't and see where we're at. Mm -hmm. Track our progress. It felt so good to get some renewed focus. Now I knew what I wanted to do moving forward, but that wasn't enough. I needed some icing on the cake, so I reached out to my mentor, Joel Salatin, for some clearing advice. There's been talk of a mini excavator, track loader. I asked my mentor, Joel Salatin, in an email, Hey, do you ever clear significant amounts of land and how? And I, I remembered that I thought they probably did it with chainsaws, but is that true? The greatest farm in America, they would have an insight on how to do that in the most cost-effective way. I was kind of thinking I would need both those machines, which would be a significant amount of money. Joel might have just saved me tens of thousands of dollars. Of course the boys are mad at me. They still have to get a track letter. So they need it. 
I'll show you some of Joel's te techniques for clearing land in a minute. It's accessible to all, pretty much. Actually, it's interesting enough. Somebody said if you could only have one tool in homesteading, or the first tool that you should get, you know what I said? It would be a chainsaw, because you're, you're likely gonna be clearing, and it's one of the most efficient uses of fossil fuel ever. Just yesterday, we probably, whoa, whoa, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> a little spooky out here at night. <laughs> Joel, you ever clear a significant amount of acres? He said, well, depends on what a significant amount is, but we do about two acres a year every winter with chainsaws. Something about that really resonated. Two acres, once a year. You know, that's not like all consuming. That leaves time for other things for like homesteading, for other activities. And if a market farm like Joel with apprentices and employees, I think that's still quite an ambitious goal for a homesteader, but I think it's quite possible. I don't know, we're gonna find out in this 100 days. Our goal is becoming quite more clear. A goal without a plan, let's say a specific plan, is just a wish. And we ain't gonna wish around here. My dad used to say, which he died three years ago today, Poop in one hand, wish in another. See which one gets filled the fastest. <laughs> what kind of weird saying is that? But two acres more a year is one more cow a year. Horse. It's official. <laughs> the new homestead is across the creek. <laughs> what are we doing here? We're working it up, my friend. So far, that's our favorite spot. The house spot up there. That means for our two acres of clearing, we're gonna start at the house side. And for the, in this case, it's gonna come along the property line, right through there. You can see the tape right there. So from here, over, all the way to where we came in. But we might as well start where the house is gonna be and work our way down. I'm trying to find a tree that we could demo for showing how Joel Salatin clears pasture. In lieu of a mini excavator, I could get you a bigger chainsaw. All right, let's clear the way for this tree we're gonna fell. It's gonna chew. So let's get all that junk out of the way. All right, let's have everybody help Lily with the brush. Step one, we're gonna cut the tree about a foot up off the ground and fell it. Once it's down, we're gonna delimb them and stack them directionally in a pile to later get them up and run them through a chipper and get some wood chips. The rest we cut up for firewood and then if there's any long poles, like 16 foot pieces straight, we cut those and we'll set those aside for later sawmilling to lumber. There's nothing straight in that, so we cut nothing, we cut nothing for lumber. Everything's firewood. One less thing to do. Now that the weight's off the tree, we can get the stump up. This chainsaw is terribly dull though. So don't judge me. It's so dull. It's smoking. I'm not gonna finish that log, but you get the point. Oh, you think I'm out of barn chain oil? Yeah, the barn chain oil is usually what cools that stuff Yeah, down but we shouldn't be running through it that fast, and it's because the chain's so, so dull. We cut it off right there, and then what we would have done is come through with our chainsaw and beveled this. So that if we're mowing in here, behind the animals, we're pulling the milk sled or the sheep shaw, we don't get hung up on that stump. Yeah. That's how you do it without an excavator. I think a track loader could push that over and then get the There's claws. that too. Maybe we leave that stump there in case we can do that. I left that one because the stump's kind of sticking up. For that reason, maybe there's a way to get it up with the track loader. How's everybody feel about clearing the clearing pasture like Joel Salatin? <laughs> the boys are, was hoping for a excavator and a track loader. A good chainsaw and a chainsaw sharpener's a heck of a lot cheaper. Well, I'm not gonna like Joel anymore. Maybe he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might save time. I feel like we have a solid plan. 
at a location. We're going for this. One of the most important things about homesteading is that you have the right tool for the right job. And loppers and string trimmers are great, but when you're wanting to cut little brush like this, even chainsaw, you don't want to bend over and do that. A brush saw, I learned, is where it's at. I've heard you in the comments. We need a brush cutter for the little sapling type stuff. It's gonna save my back. No, Gosh. first impression is that looks plenty big. He didn't even install the blade for Any us. bigger, it's gonna be heavy. He installed our blade. So. We'll see how it cuts. Let's get it going. Jonah said it's about fuel. Let's try it. Paint this up for the first time. Nice. Josiah, let's start with a little stuff and, and, and work our way up and see if, see, see what this thing can handle. Right by Sally at Briar Patch. Clear these briars first up. Alright, got the briars no problem. Try that one inch brush. Now that's Okay. Uh, you you want to try this one? This bigger, one and a half. Oh, nice. Okay, it kind of works like a stall. You kind of go slow into it. You don't just do it like a string. That's easy. Let's say that two and a half inches. Go. A little bit of a struggle. Yeah. Wow. Get the speed going first. Oh my. It knocked this big one down. Hang on. We gotta we gotta get lower down to the ground now. Well I'm happy. I would have had to chainsaw that. You gotta be able to get lower to the ground. No, no, you gotta, you gotta keep spinning and go in slow. I know it's a weird coordination. Move. It doesn't like that three inch one. That pinches it when it falls, that's all. All right, let's see if we can. My take is probably this or smaller with this yeah. machine. The problem is, or one of the problems is, let me show them again. A tree that might be that big is actually this big at the bottom, and that's a chainsaw job. And look how big this tree would have been. I mean, that's what is three inches here. It's like five or six inches down there. It's getting pinched when you get through it with some of these bigger ones. So. I think the sweet spot is maybe there. See what Lily's on? Yeah. Don't need to cut that with the saw. Just nip it with that, okay? Kay. Something that's not heavy. But the brush saw wasn't the only tool on the table. We continue to visit the heavy machinery option. Look what the kids did in my farm. We need, we need mini excavator. We need a mini excavator. Also on the back of the camera. We need a mini excavator, please. <laughs> From your loving kids. So the next day, we already have an event at Jess and Jeremiah Sowers Roots and Refuge. So we said, let's take time and check out Jeremiah's machine and see which one or both would be best for a homestead. The moment Jonah's been waiting for. <laughs> Wanna see his track loader and mini excavator. 
Which one? If you could only have one, Jeremiah. Honestly, the track loader. The track loader. Okay. Why do you say that? Actually, no, the Mini X. Because you were looking at the Mini X when you said that, no, and I was wondering. The Mini X because. This can do a lot, but I could do a lot of the same jobs with the John Deere tractor, the ag tractor. Oh. It would just take longer. Yeah. So the bucket's like twice the size of a regular ag tractor, and so you can get a lot more material it's moved a and spread. Too, isn't yeah, it? and it's a little bit faster. But you could do the same job with a regular tractor. It just takes longer. Really? Now the Mini X can do things that neither of those things can do. So mm. I'd probably go with the Mini X if Where'd I had you? to pick one. Okay, But I mean, that's very situational. Rebecca's already jumped on it. So what are these good for as far as work is concerned then? I mean, they do the job of lots of manual labor. They just they can knock out stuff. For example, you can dig a trench by hand with a shovel. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. bare, like bare minimum, if you had nothing else, you could dig a trench. It would take you an awful long time with a lot of calories burned, a lot of back. Would this okay. help you dig a ditch? It will. So okay, then you can get then you can one. get a, a, a handheld trencher that you walk behind, mm. and that just jostles so that well, faster, but still a lot of work, a lot of involvement, a lot of time, a lot more time. Or something like this, and I can put a trencher, which is that thing oh. right there with the blade on it, and I can trench from here to my house in about 30 minutes. What? Three foot down, perfectly width for. So we up could to put the water high. line in like that. I run. I already power. had. That's why I have power. water line running all the power. I mean, Justin, I didn't know this. <clears throat> Let's, let's oh, she's changed her tone. She's this. changed her tone. I told you this. Joke. I told yeah. you this. It helps so you get your house. So just on that too, aspect, babe. just so like, and just I, from that, alone. I priced how to rent a trencher or to have someone trench for you. Every month that I have this equipment, it pays for itself on a job that I would have had to pay someone else to do. Okay. It pays for itself. So trenching, month. what else? I know you don't Wait. do a ton of fencing. No. But the auger is still useful for I a lot of things. That. Um, I planted trees. Planting with it. trees. That's with true. The auger. We've done deep big holes. You can Which, get, I see you planted a lot of trees. Yeah, we you have a ton of that auger. Justin, I have like 80 trees coming. Oh, I know. We got 80 trees coming, yep. Jeremiah. We're gonna I'm not going to say somebody. buying a skid steer is worth the 80 trees, but when you <laughs> pile it with all the other things you can do with yeah. it, it makes it worth One it. month it might be. Right, right. right. And then next month we have more work. But yeah, I mean, we we would use it. Okay, like, so I know, you're, I know you're prepping the pasture, right? Yeah, uh, yeah okay. we're, we're So forest. I got a high flow stump grinder that attaches on the okay. front. You literally drive up to a stump, set it down, and use your thumb controls and just grind the stump out completely. Four inches into the ground, disappears. Move on to the next one. It takes about 20 minutes to grind out. Wow. A massive stump. So if you're prepping pasture, I like stump grinding and mulching because it produces soil. You know, yeah. it basically breaks down all that wood, and instead of just piling it up and burning it, you're shredding it down, and then it starts yeah. breaking down. Especially if you run this, stuff like pigs behind it. Is the stump grinding different than forestry mulching? It is. The, it the, is. It, the forestry mulching takes down the whole tree. It can take down the whole tree, but we've actually we have one of those also, and it doesn't get into stumps real good. It can. Okay. You can do it. It just takes a lot longer. Yeah. So we ended up going with a stump, stump grinder. Yeah, I like the stump grinding idea because we want to harvest the bigger wood for firewood and then limbs or, for yeah. mulching for like a, a deep bedding where we want to have like in our pasture that we cleared it would be nice to stump grind yeah. all those stumps yeah 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 right the stump grinder it's cheaper than the mulcher i'm sure by, by far by far yeah the mulcher is yeah. a big deal it is okay okay you got your trencher that's trencher you auger. can rent this equipment too you can also rent attachments sorry you don't have to buy them all yeah and then you have the auger set of forks so for lift digging capacity. for trees digging for fence posts Set of forks. Yeah. This is now a. That's for the excavator. That's the excavator. This is a trenching bucket, so it's got no teeth on the front, and it's got a smooth back. So like, putting in culverts, diverting water. No, this is for the mini. Mini. And then you've got a grappler hook, which is also, I mean, self-explanatory. Pick you up use, brush, drag you use the it. Use grappler mainly, mainly for just picking up brush. Mm -hmm. Can you can you get roots out of the ground with that? Not really. Not with okay, that. Okay. Okay. No, no. They have. If you want, they have a root puller. Yes, they have this thing. I've seen lots of different ways to do it, but they have this one attachment. That's like this, almost like an arrow, right? And you yeah. push it down under the root, under the stump, and then pick up, and it literally just pulls the. Yeah, that's nice. Now that it's limited okay. on size, because at some point there's yeah. so much pressure, you'd probably just pick the machine up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, so yeah. I mean, you bigger can't machine, do... the bigger root. So is okay. this is this Mini X or the that's, that's a track loader? Track okay. loader. Okay. All right. It's a grappler. So Jeremiah, you've heard what we're doing. You know, we're, we're unloading feed. We're getting all the they they pulled all the seal out of our pond. We need to put it in a manure spreader, spread it out. We're cleaning out deep bedding every year. We're clearing forests. I'd say you definitely need this the track is the loader. one okay over the between the two like yeah. and you may end up for deciding later you know you want to get that like yeah go ahead yeah if I see I'm but if you're just to gonna get one job. I would go with this first and then get some attachments to go with it because attachments will go we'll, we'll get hand. you two most of them are pretty reasonable the mulcher head was not all right <laughs> having a sharp chainsaw 
can be the difference between pleasure and drudgery. Early on we had Mark, my mobile mechanic, come over with his electric chainsaw sharpener to show us what's up. You mark it so you'll mark know where it's starting. Right, so I know when I get back around. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to sharpen a set chain? Uh, after I get it, get it off the saw, about, I'll know, maybe 10 minutes. 10 minutes. How do you know how much to do? Well, you can set the depth right oh. here. But I just, I just know how far to go down. I just go down, you know, right to the bottom of the curve. Okay. And then now spin it around. Yeah, and that's going to be the other angle. I the angle on both right. sides, otherwise you're going to cut crooked. Wait, right. Yeah, which is what I was starting to do. See, that was, oh, we him. just cut these that was this way. Yeah. And now it should fit. For doing the flat file, for getting these teeth, mm -hmm. you don't have to do it as often? No, just maybe once. Sometimes only you never do them right. Only if it's sticking up higher than your blade. Mm -hmm. Now with a fresh sharpened saw, how far can we get on our little pasture here? Hey, do you think a track loader would push this stump? Yeah. And uproot it? Oh yeah. A track loader? Oh yeah, it should. Yeah, the higher you keep them, the more leverage you'll have. So how high would you keep this? Josh is also clearing land on his homestead. I think maybe that's maybe a hair short. Yeah, it's a little short, but it should be thick enough it won't buckle. So maybe one like this, keep it right here. Yep, even, yeah, yeah, a little higher. It's good to have a filmmaker that is uh, also experienced <laughs> clearing pasture. Uh, I've just been cutting these down Something to the ground, like but... You could just dig right out, no problem. Yep. You just, oh, with the uh, yeah, track you just, loader? Yeah, you just get some what? dirt, pull up the roots. I didn't think about that. Yeah, anything that small. Maybe I shouldn't even be pushing this, cutting this down to the ground level. I mean, I mean Joel, Joel cuts them down to the ground level, then bevels it, and that's it. He's done. Yeah, yeah. You can definitely do that. Of course, then you have to worry, wait for decay, you know, for the root yeah. ball. This way, you are disturbing more soil, but you're getting it gone. That's the drawback of the machine, is it would really tear it up coming up in here. Yeah, I'd cut it right about here. Uh -huh. get yeah, about good, four feet up. About four feet up. Get yeah. a good bite of it with the uh, front loader and then just push it on over. The root ball should pop right up. Uh, if you have to, you could always dig around a little bit on the edges just to free up the soil some and just push it right over. Dang, you got a big one there. Just the small stuff. And I gotta be careful not to hit the ground. I'm just gonna dull my saw getting down close to that laurel. Oh uh, yeah, look. Cut that down to the ground, it's just filthy. It's gonna dull my saw. Dull my saw, put a chain around it, pull it up with a bucket, or scoop it up. Time's out. I'm happy. You happy, Josiah? Yeah. Well, you got with it. The 200 bucks is gonna be worth it for that electric sharpener it takes half the time to sharpen a saw and gets it done right when i do it the saw ends up being saws crooked and just isn't as as nice that was super nice yeah i'm sold on that chainsaw sharpener it's a game changer also ordered the chainsaw sharpener i think that's gonna be worth its weight in gold after mark sharpened my chainsaw yesterday absolutely a pleasure that was the difference between chainsaw being fun versus a job. Shall we try it first time? Yeah, sure. Wow. You good? Yeah. Isn't that doing it? Yeah. yeah, you're really doing it, Papa. The idea of big machines was starting to make more and more sense, although it's gonna, it's gonna make me a nervous wreck because it's such a big pur purchase, but it could also open up new business opportunities. Could I start a grading company? So we took a drive to the dealership. Never hurts to find out more information, right? Tractor. <laughs> Maybe that's in your future one day, Henry. <laughs> you said they had the one Jeremiah had? Yep, 331D. That one's it? I think so. And they got the 333, which is probably bigger. A bunch of 333s. All they got, 12,000 pounds. Uh, I'm thinking a little big for us. This is not it. This is, 
He's also got a 325. And I think we're interested in that. He doesn't have it. It's available. Actually, all these are sold. Apparently there's supply chain issues big time on this kind of equipment. And then the 333. So ours would be smaller. Ah, there's the 325. I think that's all that we would need. That one's very well used. It's got what you call a high flow option. It's only a couple more thousand dollars more. It just gives you, I, I reckon that gives you, I'm not sure I completely understand, but I think it gives you more power in the bucket. I could be totally wrong. Turns out John Deere is offering the best financing deal. They go five years and the nearest competitor was only like two years. So that makes it more lucrative because if I'm gonna be paying for grading, Anyway, and instead I just make a payment all day long, it makes sense, it's less, and then I still have a machine at the end of it. It's just like, no brain. Right now I'm just feeling better about the, the little one, just for farm application overall. I'm not gonna be running mulcher on it, but the amount of acres we're having and our goal being two acres a year, I mean, a mulcher can do an acre in a day. I would just hire that out, because the mulching attachment is just uh, expensive. For what we're trying to do the littler one less intimidating being first time we're driving it um, and definitely less expensive like twenty thousand dollars less expensive we're gonna go in the office now and see about availability i think this this chain is like 50 stores wide and so you might have one somewhere that's gonna be our problem <laughs> i have feed coming i might be calling new country and be like um can you put that in two sacks 1,000 pounds each because Lucky won't lift 2,000 pounds. Just wrapped it up in there. Guess what? Definitely, definitely not unloading feed with our own equipment. These things aren't available till uh, March. One in the beginning of March. If we were to go for the excavator, it'd be the end of March. So it's gonna be a while. Well, the 100 days of building a homestead just got that much more interesting. Track loader definitely gonna be in here and on time. It may be a speed bump, but it ain't gonna stop us. Day 25 of 100 days of growing food. 25% in, two acres we need to clear. We probably haven't done an eighth, so we are behind. And today, we realize we're not gonna have any big machines till this is long over. So today we ask, not what I can do with new machines, but what can I do without? In the spirit of entrepreneurship and, and uh, G uh, Jeremiah's idea, hey, I'm, I have these machines, I'm not using them all the time. What if I hired an experienced operator, you know, got licensed, did all the things, insurance, and started a small grading business? We were making good progress around what we'll call parcel number two, our favorite, the passive solar guy's favorite. And then we realized after clearing more and more, we're just getting a clearer view of the neighbor's property. That means the neighbor could potentially develop right up to the property line and then we built this massive, beautiful dream home and that's our, God knows what our view would be. So we came up with a new idea to take us in a different direction. We're exploring a very interesting option mm -hmm. for this homestead expansion. We looked at various house sites. We liked house site too, but then it's like further examinations, real close to a neighbor. Yeah. We're like, and then the other one so is too close. Is yeah, we would need to acquire the yeah. neighbor to have the and then site to three, have the trees really out of like the way. It. I don't really like site three. So what if we just remodel? Yeah, we're so exploring tomorrow. Contractors coming tomorrow, and we're gonna go over it. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Literally, it's um, supposed to deluge tomorrow. I'm literally in his nervous about this because I mean it's not gonna be any more expensive than building a house. In fact, it's gonna be much. It cheaper. should be a lot, which is one of the appeals. A lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. Yeah. And you can get an equity line on the house. So it's well, a lot easier than yeah. getting a, like a construction loan. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. All right, that's tomorrow. That should be exciting because this lady has big dreams. I'll admit, this is a big curveball for this 100 days of building a homestead. However, I think this is really relatable 
and really important to talk about and show because what you do for a house is going to be the most important thing in a permaculture homestead design because it's where you spend most of the time. A quick tour to make my next point. A and a white greenhouse. Turn around behind you. We have an ultimate bulletproof brooder. A butterfly can't get in there and bother the chicks. A stanchion. Stalls down here if we need them in a pinch. A shed. A pole barn. Walk-in freezer. Ice machine. A workshop. A woodshed. Right outside our house. Incidentally, our living rooms right there. It's not a very long commute to work in the winter. Speaking of winter, a wood boiler. Go from the wood boiler out. You've got a high tunnel around the corner. We've got a stall set up for deep bedding if we need it. On farm, diesel fuel. A root cellar. It's normally not gonna have be exposed to the elements. Generator, and not just any generator. That's a Cummins diesel run off the diesel farm fuel whole house generator and how about a jamming backyard with chickens and raised beds oh and the new the waterproofing we just did in the new deck there are three problems i can think off the top of my head with this place one we're in the valley so we're in the frost pocket you don't want to do that you don't want to be fighting the extra cold if you don't have to you want to be at least 50 60 feet off the bottom floor two we are 36-ish, 40 feet, 50 feet from the public road. And three, my dad built this, that's wonderful. It was his dream, not necessarily ours, it's not necessarily what we would do, and it doesn't necessarily have that. Well, we didn't build it together. We came into it. Basically, what we're realizing is, we have deep, deep, deep roots here. Oh, not just to this, I mean, the land. 90 years in our family, but to this house, because we have taken it and turned it into something. Could, and, and, and because we have deep roots here, I say, bring on the storms. This of course is not a passive solar house, but are there some things we could do? Could we do a remodel and make this something more of what we've created and we could tap into some pallet passive solar features and if you're putting up privacy stuff like plants or fences that's also going to block the the cold air coming down in the winter and settling in the valley and that will give us a bit of a microclimate here all right becky you want to tell them your wild wild dream I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's I obviously... guess we got to figure out how wild we can go. So. Yeah, I guess we need to figure out how wild of a budget we have. Because we can do anything. You can do anything. Yeah. Now, it is it worth it? It depends upon how much it's going to cost. <laughs> anything can be done with enough money. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could even bulldoze the whole house and start a new one. <laughs> right. I know, right? Yeah. I think we need to figure out the style of this roof and if there's any load bearing anything. All right, Seth, we're getting to be real close friends. Mm -hmm. We're letting you in this loft as we as we get it organized. What are you looking for? I'm looking for what this is. Like, She's dead, huh? <laughs> no turning back. <laughs> Why can this stable it back? So our goal is to determine what's load bearing and what's correct. not. Correct. Correct. So like this this wall over here, we put that up. Yeah. Okay. Because it used to all be this. It used to all be open. Open and you just put that partition there. Correct. So I don't know if any of the walls inside of our home are load bearing. Okay. Because I think that the barn was built, and then living in it was an afterthought. If you don't have a uh, like an attic space mm -hmm. per se, which um, you don't. We don't. We don't have an um, attic. It, look, like it looks to me like, you know, if we go out and we can look at yeah. this in the skylight. Yeah. We didn't know if this was load bearing, so we put a beam in, but we didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's not. So y'all y'all added we that? We added beam. that beam when we took, because there used to be a wall here. Mm -hmm. And there, and then this wall was here, and there used to be a door. And I'm assuming entry. with a barn, there's no blueprints and no drawings. Even if you get an engineer, <laughs> he's not going to be able to tell you anything because he can't see it. Uh-huh. So the so only we're way... we're going to have to rip things out for him to see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So y'all put that beam in. Correct. There. Why did we put a beam in? Because in Randolph didn't know if it was load bearing or not. Okay. Was there, was there, not there already a wall? Was yes, there, a wall there was a wall here. Took, that's that wall that you're talking about. Usually a barn is just one big open space. Yeah, and that's what it was for a long time. And I guess it was used for hay and Yeah, it was whatnot. hay. And then it became junk. <laughs> yeah, actually above this ceiling, you could get up there. It was attic. Yeah, I guess that would be. Like, yeah, that would be the closest. So this wall doesn't. Have. This wall doesn't even go up. It doesn't to the, go up to the roof. Okay, this is about. Yeah. Th you know, thirty-two inches. Down to right here. Yep. Yep. You have your rafters up yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. That are holding your. That's right. Your and they put up boards for insulation. Yep. And so they they framed it down and put gave you a ceiling. Yep. Because um, we were gonna remodel this. Yes, this is. So I would say, you know, you see this bottom cord right here. Uh -huh. This it's not truss per se; mm -hmm. it's stick framed. Right. Um, yeah, this is not load dad. bearing. This is sitting on that. This the top of that. So right. that that new ceiling uh, is, is what uh, I suspected by looking at the skyline. Okay. The roof's not load bearing, but the but the ceiling underneath it doesn't have a lot of load, but it's. It's carrying on the on that wall. Sounds like you're wanting to be able to have the flexibility to open everything up. And then yeah, I want to completely wanna change the, the floor, plan. floor plan. Okay. Um, this, this is my wild idea, but we don't have to do that. Like, if it's not cost prohibitive, I'm not like stuck on that. We can still just move the kitchen over here, and we'll just make shift that around to work for us. Yeah, and sometimes. You know, when you take out a wall, uh -huh. if you're fine, you can always put a beam there. Right. You know? um, okay. Well, I guess we yeah, can well, talk about what we want. Columns. So this is the south side. So living room would stay here. I want to, I don't want this kitchen. I want to like rip out pretty much from everything. Exterior wall, exterior wall. Yeah, on this side. Also, I had the idea that I would like to possibly hey, use oh, this as like, um, like a sunroom type room where we would, I don't know what the possibilities of putting in like skylights in there, like several skylights. Yeah, we need to take advantage of the sun side. Yeah, but the other thing was, is I would like to open up these three windows to be like one big opening, like a walkthrough and not have a door. One. So basically turning that into expandable living space. Correct. <laughs> so like right that, here. Nothing else works that we do. Like put up, putting like an entryway kind of like right here and then, you know, the wall, like maybe a closet here. And then that would be opening up that room. Yeah, for bathrooms and a bedroom. Okay. Or bedrooms and bathroom. Okay. And like where the cold room is, it has to stay that way. And so what we're like getting from you today room. is, can we take down the wall? And also, can it, we? also it puts it in my noggin too. Because the kids don't really like the way their bedrooms are. And the bedrooms are kind of funky sizes. They're not really like good sizes. They want their own bathroom type space. And with the plumbing already in place there, mm -hmm. you don't have to really move. It depends on the layout. You don't have to move a whole lot. Maybe you go to Austin. Yeah. And, and give him to do two different plans. And then, and then, and then we can it. look at, we can present it to you and you can kind of be like, give us a ballpark, a ballpark estimate. Cause then we have to go to the bank to do a loan. And see, see, see where the, that's where that all breaks down. Exactly, exactly. The equity line. You could save money, you know, by leaving the hardwood mm -hmm. and just if you can, find, if you can it. match it, add to it, and anywhere where you delete walls, you could go just, through and just and tooth it back. Okay. And just well, yeah. I mean, I would be willing to keep it. I, if I remember correctly, this is off. This of is our off land. the land. Hardwood floor is expensive. Yeah. I know. That, what kind of floor is it? I'm is pretty oak? sure it's red oak. When you're demoing, uh -huh. it's, it's better to just demo everything, everything that's going on. You know, and I mean, I would like to probably update our bathroom. It's been 10 years and I would like to maybe redo some configuration. But like we have this space in, in here that we use as a sauna, but I would like to actually have a built-in sauna. I don't know how that would, I mean, that's Austin. He's gonna have to come up with all of that. I mean, like there's some that I would like to do in here, but it's not like, so really, not the main focus. yeah, I mean, I would like for this to be like opened up, like yeah. completely open and maybe even farther down. But I know I realized like with a kitchen, I'm going to have to have like a wall for a fridge and like stuff yeah. like that. Like I'm going to have yeah. to have some wallage. So I don't know. I mean, Austin, if that's going to be Austin's. A lot of that's going to be on Austin now. 
I'm getting excited about this possibility. You guys getting excited about the possibility? See a huge remodel. How about remodeling and uh, making it as passive solar friendly as possible? Rebecca's idea for a deck out there means more windows on this side. It means living spaces on this side. So far, that's good. So keeping it this way, putting the bedrooms behind us on the north side. More skylights, opening this up. I kinda like that we settled in on this hybrid sort of thing where we're, we're using it up, wearing it out, making it do or doing it out, so to speak. Something we already have. But then we're also building it. I mean, in this case, remodeling, but then it just feels more and more our own. Obviously, uh, less expensive than a new house. Certainly easier to get the uh, money for it because we can do an equity line on this. This a lot easier than we could get a new construction line. And I'd rather not go into that much debt anyway. And the cool thing about working with Seth, a local car, guys, he li he's living in the house that I grew up in three miles from here. <laughs> he bought it from my dad before he uh, He's close and he's really cool, really flexible. Not all contractors will let you work with them. They'll let us work with them. And we're gonna build this house. And that'll save us some money. While we move forward with the remodel idea, we continue to develop the two acres right across the street. The closest clearing of acres possible to the house. But by day 33, we were not anywhere near one third of the way done. So much rain, so many obstacles were getting in our way. Another obstacle, business calls. But this is actually, this is gonna be really fun business. I have to approve. Mr. Brown, where are your shoes? Children's book. The artist has gotten back with the final print and work, and I need to prove it before my agent does without me. Are you going to help milk the cows? Mr. Brown's sister, Lily, called out as she's headed to the barn with his brother. Mr. Brown sighed, I want to, but I can't find my shoes. I'll help you look, Lily said. That book, though, that's my first kid's book. That is so convenient. It's gonna be so cool. Early spring launch, if I'm understanding them right. When the sun warmed up the hydrant, I went to turn it on, and the water came on, but wouldn't turn off. The little rod that goes up and down in the ground to turn the lever off in the bottom had broken. You guys are some men. Look, it is leaking out the bottom of that. Right here, I see it. That's to protect the wheat drain, I'm sure. That actually looks legit. Yeah, I know, that's what Some I'm people thinking. use a bucket, but that looks legit. So we've turned off the water. That means the water is off to the entire hauler. Uh, let's dig it out and see what we've done. The good news is, we found our water line, and it's teed off the main water line to this, and I don't think we busted our main water line. That's a lot of gravel. Oh. There it is. See, your uh, seep is leaking. I don't think anything's broken. Your wheat pole is running. Oh. It probably has something to do with us Messing pulling that lever that. up, and it's not all the way off. Hey, where are you, you just hold it steady there. Guys, we're about to fix this on our own. I got a T-post driven all the way down here to support this so it doesn't wobble. Now, let's put gravel in that hole. We should probably test it before we go. <laughs> Bearing it, hold it down here, and then, then do it. <laughs> Interesting, 135. This pump shouldn't have been turned on until it was 170. So I'm gonna turn that off. If it's gone up 35 degrees, that means we, we have a fire in there. Oh yeah, we have a fire. It's warm. That's our propane heater and AC system. Nothing 
core we can do now. Just let it get up to 170. And then we'll turn on the pump and then the thermostat. We're in this 100 days to build a homestead challenge. And if we're to clear two acres, tap a water source, and clear an access road, well, we're gonna have obstacles in that very work. We weren't able to keep the chain on, the chainsaw. Uh, we're not able to get bigger machines till this challenge is long over. The real challenge is this, is life on the farm. The reality is we've got a gigantic homestead that still has to be ran. I asked Rebecca the other day, because I feel a lot of pressure to, to, to get this done. She said, I said, are we gonna make it? Maybe you should um, go clear while we do the chores. That's a possibility, Lily, and thank you so much for that idea. Although, I feel like, I feel like this is something I wanna do together. And I know that's together, even dividing and conquering is together, but together, together. Rebecca so candidly replied, I don't think so. And I laughed. She said it's a lot, and there's a lot of other stuff going on. It would be one thing if we were truly starting over on a homestead and didn't have any animals or gardens or house yet, you know what I mean? Because houses are a lot of maintenance, like the wood thing. But all of you have obstacles. We're all gonna have obstacles. We all have jobs. We all gonna have to live somewhere. Like if it's, if it's not a house on the property, you're gonna have an RV or something like that. We're gonna have appointments like today. A business call at 10. I was chainsawing three minutes ago. Okay. 11, physical therapy. A new calf is coming at 12. A heifer. A heifer. We're gonna heifer. A new, it will be a milk cow for us. Wow. There she is. She looks nice. What's her name? Guacamole? Ooh, I like that. And at 1, we have Austin coming. Our draftsman to help us come up with house plans for our remodel. But after all the appointments and obstacles, we got to kicking it into high gear in the afternoon. Hey, you having a good birthday? Yeah. <laughs> what, is that the biggest tree you ever cut down right there? Yeah. Nice. How to get it out from the middle? Okay. I would I would start on that end, cutting everything you can off, and then cut your lines. And then we spin it over and we cut the other side of it. Man, am I not the most fortunate man alive? The most fortunate father alive. My boy wants to saw wood on his birthday. We got that bank. Well, you see how much we've done there. We got that pile. And then we got a pile over there. There's nothing more satisfying than your boys growing up, becoming a teen, becoming teens and not being a burden, but a blessing and working side by side. Thank you, honey. And she brings us water for like, really? Am I, have I died and gone to heaven? That was super cool working side by side with my boys. It looks like a tree graveyard with tombstones with all the stumps. Let's do some rough calculations. I think we're better off than I might have imagined. This, the rectangle down here is 110 by 100. I don't know how to do triangle in the field. I'll have to go to the internet for that. Just that, 110 times 100 is 11,000. 45,000 in an acre. So let's say that's a fourth. That's a quarter of an acre. Well, not counting the triangle. So we're over a quarter of an acre. So we did two and a half percent today towards the goal. If you had 100 days, you would definitely do that if you made that success. If we're 32 days into this, and we've done a little over a quarter of an acre. We need to be at a third of an acre, so we're maybe a little behind. Pretty close though, but we gotta keep it up. Can we do that much? Basically, six days a week. I don't know, we had a really good day today. And, you, and, you, and if you follow this, you know we've had a lot of obstacles the last few days, but we're back, we're back on track, and there is hope. We're a third of the way through this 100-day challenge, and we've done a lot of clearing, but we haven't yet tapped water. We need to change that. Yes, we have clearing to do in this project. We also have access to do. This old logging road leads all the way across our property, up it, all the way to the end, and that's part of what we're gonna do in this 100 days, is get that clear and drivable. This area is nice. Oh look, I think they've already been here and 
cut a tree out from across. Yeah, look. It's good to mix it up. Put in pasture one day, clear and road the next. Keeps the kids excited. The rule is we need to be able to get Sally through here without hitting any branches. Good job, you already saw them big old logs. Look, this is gonna be a nice feature. You'll be able to see this creek. And here, we got a little creek. And that's handy that we're gonna clear this road because we'll get to the top of this, where this creek is at the top of our property for, for tapping water, which is our other project for the 100 days. <laughs> to our water it's a blessing have water uphill from all that pasture that we're clearing down below that's a super cool area look at that I'm super happy because we cleared the access road to the edge of our property that was a bonus didn't take long Jonah my oldest son had gotten in a dirt bike accident before the hundred day challenge and hasn't been able to help us all along the way but day 36 he was cleared to go and it was a huge game changer. What do you think? Wow, I'm, in, I'm super impressed. We probably got 2,000 square feet just like that. Big pile, big pile, little pile, another little pile, big pile, little pile. We only lack a few things. Working up this branch, a couple branches we missed. Every once in a while, somebody survived and got missed. But for the most part, I wouldn't say we got all 3,600 feet, let's say, done. I'd say we had a 30, a 3,000 day because we still got some brush right here and a cluster of trees there's the fence line the sheep were in here they helped us clear we could get in there it's gonna be so nice and then when that cluster has gone see the green pasture behind it we're gonna have a heck of a view to our farm extremely satisfying day the boys are into it I just love that oh man I've died and gone to heaven just out here working with my boys. After a lot of thought, I decided to move forward with the Mini X and the track loader. We just had a little time out. John Deere guy came, I signed on it. Whew, okay. Marchish. Lily wanted to help with chainsawing, but still too young to do that. But I had this idea, the same, somewhat same principles apply to a Sawzall. You gonna get some training? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to run the chainsaw, you got to learn to run the sawzall. You could cut that, perhaps. Try it. Now here, let me show you how to do it. Like this? You have to hold this against that, okay? Yeah. Don't do like this. Do like this. Okay. And get it sawn. This is pretty dull blade, so let's do smaller stuff. Cut little branches off the off main branches if you okay. want. Cause the saw is so dull. There you go. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. We got to get a new blade for that if you're gonna be doing it. Okay? okay. You tell me if you like it, and then we'll get you a new blade on it. There you go. Nice.
Look at this girl. Massive pile. Good job, Lily. How you like it? Good. Just wait till we get you a sharp blade. Doing great. In order to stay focused and excited, we would sometimes give ourselves daily goals. And sometimes just accomplishing those was just pure motivation enough to go another week. We're trying to think how we can get Sally and equipment up to where we are. We have an old access road into here, but all these logs are blocking it. There's some laying in the way right there. Taking a little bit of a speed bump here to get us some access, which we'll speed it up in the end. The goal is 45 minutes. We get Sally on the other side of this. Can we do it? If we don't do it, we'll feel set back again with it tomorrow. Help me clear this over. That's cleared. That's it, Josiah. Well, this is gonna be a little tight. Sometimes there was a tangible reward for meeting goals. We got Jonah a uh, chainsaw for his birthday coming up. What's the reward if we get done, if we get our 1,300 square foot quota today? I can have my chainsaw early. How about you can have your chainsaw tomorrow? If we get done early today. I'll give it to you today though. You could queue it up and all that stuff. Okay. Can we get done? Yeah. Okay, well we got a hustle, we're behind. You can see our line there. safe. I like it. Woo! Time's up. Boy's excited. All right, you get to coddle it. Let's go. Oh. How's that feel? Good. So nice. It is so nice. You can you can sleep with it tonight in the bed. <laughs> like a teddy bear. What are you gonna do with that thing? Chop a lot of trees down. See the tape? Yeah, we can do That's it. That's the end way up there. Bits What's the reward? Okay. I get a chocolate bar. Chocolate bar split for Josiah and Jonah. Run back, run back. The moment you guys been waiting for. You made the quota. Go to town. While we were clearing, we discovered a water feature I didn't even know we had, and I was hopeful that it would be clean and work for us. Jonah, not so much. <laughs> we found a spring. Somebody has built up rocks right here. You guys, we have that washed out, and I was wondering what that was from, if it's just from washout. We're sitting on a spring. <laughs> Woo! This is awesome. Somebody way back in the day has put some sort of rock here to mark it. You think there's a culvert there? That does kind of look like somebody's built some kind of bridge, but why? And where? Like Maybe there was a trail like going up that way. And then the other end of it would be right here. Yeah. And it's gotten buried. Why would somebody put a culvert in though? I do see remnants of a creek up above it. Yeah, that might not be a spring. Got a little nook across the creek over here for grazing. You're right. 
That's probably just an underground creek. I think tomorrow we should continue climbing and exploring this dried up creek. Maybe we'll find a spring at the top of our property. That would be ideal. The higher we can find up a spring, the better. Cause then we can gravity feed our livestock and us. I decided to bring in a local spring expert, Eric, from Base Camp WNC on YouTube to come in and help us settle the debate. If this was gonna work for us to provide water for our new two acres of clearing. So we're out here clearing yesterday and look at this. So somebody's put a rock wall there. Jonah kind of thinks that's a culvert. Do we have a spring right here? Or is that a creek gone under underwater? Well, we got base camp WNC here. If anybody can help us figure it out, it's Eric. And I don't know if he's right and it's a culvert that's draining. Yeah, or you're if looking it's... for a culvert then. You found a culvert? What? Or is that a rock? Might be a rock. I think it's a rock. Parts of me wants it to be a culvert and, and a, a little creek underground. Another part of me wants it to be a spring. I'd rather the spring be higher up. We could gravity feed the pretty place from here, but that's about it. No culvert, but plenty of rock. So we're gonna hike up a little bit and see if we can't find the source. See, this has had some significant water in it. Yeah. Don't you think to be ravined out three feet? But I mean, you're also in the lowest section of this land. Yeah. Which would be the natural flow. Okay. Wow. I'm ready. He's definitely found water here. Is this a water system flowing down or, or is this a number of springs? That you don't know. Sally got us to spot number two. What's our elevation? 2450. Okay. The house is 2300. So if you got 150 foot, you got 75 pound of pressure in theory going from okay. here to there. You'll tap it here. You'll have your barrel down there. You'd collect off that bottom rock or maybe this middle rock here. Probably collect off of this one. Okay. And put the weir down here. Okay. So it runs down. So we'll get this cleared up for you by the time you get back. We'll clear this out. We'll saw in here. We gotta get all this brush out of here, Jesse. This is a 15 gallon drum. Yeah. Cut in half. Okay. Just split right down the middle. Okay. Um, it is then framed with like two by twos. Yeah. Screwed into it from the inside. Mm -hmm. There is a okay. half inch piece of hardware cloth on the bottom. Okay. A piece of stainless steel screen door yeah. wire. And then a piece of half inch hardware cloth okay. on top just to add strength to it. Yeah. Should a stick, rock, something like that. And all this here is really for is to keep salamanders, bugs, crickets, Big debris from getting and in. Really, here. the problem with that is it's going to clog up your outlet. Really, right. the outlet comes here, yep. and it just kind of yep. keeps all the little spring lizards yep. out, everything, like frogs, it. everything and you've else. Just built it on a slant based on and, your judgment. Well, this right here will be unscrewed, and we can change whatever oh, angle okay. we need right. when we get up there. Okay, cool. Dealing with homesteads, I deal with survivalist preppers, everything else. Mm -hmm. Water's number one. That's the first thing you gotta have. You know, it's kind of hard to have a 800 foot deep well pumping water from 600 feet. If the grid goes down, how are you gonna get it out? Ah, look at that. And then I'll adjust the box to kind of fit. Water's going over this plastic mold. We have holes in there, it's gonna drop through. We got this outlet pipe here and we're gonna, it's gonna go down the hill to our big tank. Oh look, First visitor. Salam, uh, crawl dead. There he goes. See, that's what the screen in that plastic for so he don't get inside. Drill these holes here and here. This is where the water's naturally flowing. And just with those holes in there, we now have a full pipe of water flowing out. And that's probably not quite it, but one inch pipe, gravity flow flows 12 gallons a minute. It came out as a three quarter inch piece of pipe 
two one inch. Mm. So the only thing we're really getting is what comes out that three quarter inch pipe, but that's still a pile of water. And let it roll? Yeah. No way. Is that where it's supposed to go? No, it's got about <laughs> 10 more foot to go. <laughs> it's upright now. <laughs> Don't take much heat. No, you can you can really warp them if you do too much heat. Well, where is the water going to? Uh, it's going out the end of this hundred foot line. We did it. The water outlet line is in. We're 150 feet down that way. Got to get more line up here, but I'd say this line. is a very successful day. A whole lot more line. To get to the top of that pasture. 200 feet probably, 250, 300. That's a good feeling. That's why we do this, just for this kind of feeling right here. All this hard work, just for this noise right here. Sustainability, it's saying. This was one of our biggest accomplishments of the 100 days. Now that we've tapped water from a continual gravity-fed water source, that will reduce our workflow tremendously, saving us lots of time and increasing productivity to these new acres. Our work's not done though. Now that we have the water line, we still have to figure out a way to get the water from the line to the animals in the various paddocks. I'm wanting to do an Everflow water system in the field for the 10 pigs, the 10 market pigs. It's gonna involve a trip to the hardware store. And I'm thinking we might do that this morning while it's uh, cold. I've added a new goal for this end of the 100 days. We're gonna get the market pigs over there on gravity-fed water from that section. There's our tank. I want it to be big. This is a 125 gallon tank versus a 50 gallon tank. So when it's full, the pigs don't move it. The trick is this is gonna have to move to a different paddock every 12 days. So they're gonna start out in here and then they're gonna move up and we're gonna have a water line coming down the access road. So say there's a water line here. We gotta be able to connect into that water line with some flexibility. The idea is that water will be running into this thing Filling the tank up always the overflow isn't until here So it'll, it'll fill up and it'll overflow and therefore it'll always be moving and this end We'll have a hose that takes it back down to the creek where it was going That is the water that the pigs don't drink. This has room for several nipples. I'm thinking probably four this could be completely revolutionary for getting pigs in the forest or pasture during the winter and would definitely open up possibilities for us free up the pole barn if it doesn't work. Hauling water out here is going to be very tricky. It's a case to have some hose. I think we have enough line, but we might get some more just in case. There it is. <laughs> this is the stuff for our one inch. We have a piece like this at home. This goes into the tank. It comes out here. Now we need to get down to garden hose size. We got some stuff. Where are the shut offs? We need to find the adapters. No ball valves here. I think if we find a ball valve, we can then build our transition from it. Did you find them? Is that it? That is, where are they at? They're down there. Here's a one inch. Here's a three quarter inch. That's can you remember, are our valves that big or that big? That is big. And that says one inch to three quarter, okay. Close. They only have two of these? Yeah, we have I some do have our... some of the house. Let's get what they have in one inch line. <laughs> gonna go from that that one works right with some heat oh you want to get one of those heat guns <laughs> do not try that at home <laughs> we're not at home you've got a bunch of those at home too do we but you can let's just out. get some more you sure <laughs> no. my goal right now here we're gonna stick this on here somehow or other we got the right stuff 
connect a water hose to this. I'll do a jig if this happens. That thing does it fast, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This is going to have water out in here. I think you. I think and that's going to freeze. You would probably. Well, why does it doesn't, matter if it freezes? It doesn't matter except it might break something. Well, I'm sure you could get something that could screw on. Yeah, the cap on that. Oh, we're cooking with grease. We've got gravity-fed water from up to the pond coming down through this hose and coming in to our inlet. Into what will be our pig waterer. 125 gallons. Multiply that, guys. 125 times eight. How much does that weigh? Over 800 pounds. <laughs> What's 25 times eight? 200. Thousand pounds, half a ton. I should not do math in public, but we'll go for it. Half a ton. Beefcake cannot lift that. Okay, Henry, what do you think? You think it's working? I don't know. I shouldn't get giddy yet. It's filled. And it's draining. It's draining. We should make sure that's on. Yeah, that's on. Here's the true test, though. Is it coming out the drain line into the creek? Theoretically, that could be a pig paddock right there. It's coming out, it's coming out. It's working, it's working. Uh-oh, we gotta do a jig. We gotta do two jigs, Mr. Henry. <laughs> Hold that in place so it doesn't unroll. You decided to come and help? Yeah. Good decision. You hold that steady. One more straightening out and then we're going to try to haul them up the hill. Now, how to get these long hoses dragged all the way up the mountain. I think it'll actually be easier on the pole because maybe we can sit on them. I got those over. Let's get the four-wheeler, grab that in, and just pull it into the woods. I say that like that's simple. It could be simple. It could not be simple. We'll see. There it is, I see it through the woods. We're at 257, let's call it 300 feet. Let's go see what our tank's like up there, water's running. Curious to see what kind of flow we have, if the freezing weather messed with things a little bit. Any tanks right there, we only probably have 100 feet of line down from it. And then 300 feet to get to where we were. Let's hope water's still running into this thing. I hear rushing water here, that's good. Look at this, a great flow. We don't even need to fill this tank up. Let's follow this line and let's make sure it drains. I love that. I love that sound. Gravity fed water off of creek that's already here. Let's go down to the end here and see if we've got water going through our line. Funny as I'm going down here, I'm always looking for, look at this tree lily. Oh, how beautiful. Probably three and a half foot in diameter. That line is way down there. 100 feet feels a lot further when you're walking through the jungle like this. It's flowing out nicely. At that rate, I don't think it's gonna overload. If it does, we just slow it down a little bit. We need to put a shut off on that tank and we can just turn the valve down a little bit. All right, looks like the boys have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ish, I say ish, because they're not all complete. This is fast. Give me the other hose. Lily getting our other line, bringing it up. Okay. All you do is pull that off. I can hold you now, I just see for a second. Okay, let's keep going down the mountain. That's the only one where we have everything we need. But we have enough on this one. That's a mine. Do a little further away from it. We can turn this off right here, and then the water will be forced to go in here, and that can be then where we connect the small hose for, say, the pigs are over here right now. So, raise it up here. Quick, Papa. Got that quick. Whoa, that one is like a charm. Yeah, it did. All right. We're good. 
There you go. That, that was out. easy. Oh wait, and put the uh, ring on. All right, let's go down. Let's just walk, putting it to the side of the road, out of the way. I'm, I want it to be on the road and not down on the creek the whole way, so it'll be accessible, fixable. Look at this. Plenty. It reached. Uh oh, water's already here. Goodness. It'll reach plenty. You don't want water to spit on you. Alright. Jonah, clamps. You got the clamp left. Mm -hmm. Alright. There you go. That's a good clean. That's a good clean cut. Ow. Good. Oh gosh. Oh, no, no. Don't push it push, in. Put, no, push it out. There you go. There. I like it. <laughs> Just whip it. There it is. What the deal? We got the third one in. The oh. soap. No leaks. There you go, fill it up. Let's see if we've got any leaks anywhere. That's a good sound right there. Should be coming out soon. Yeah, I hear it going through. All right, we don't need it to come out here. Let's shut that off. Hear it going through? Oh, that's a good sound. Water to the pasture. Okay, now we might have too much pressure down here and somewhere we're going to need to put on a pressure regulator. This is not leaking and I hear water going through. The question is, is it going through successfully all the way to the bottom of this new acreage? I hear it going through that one. It's going through this one leak free. Pull it away from the wall so we can see it. Look at that. Whoa, there it is. It's a big day. Do you guys get it? Yeah, yeah. Like we have water throughout all our two acres. That was one of our goals. Yay! Yay! Water established. Check. We've got a logging road cleared all the way to the mount, top of the mountain. Check. Now we do have to finish clearing. We've got probably a quarter of an acre maybe. 19 days. And one of the big stretch goals is get pigs over here. Start rooting up grass seed for us. This is a big deal. <laughs> You can pick it up and move it. <laughs> this is our first paddock. I'm thinking we'll put the edge of our fence right here. And so that's where our water is going to go, okay? So, so zip this up for us. Shoot right through there and up along the edge of that ravine to where you think a big paddock is. We're working on clearing this. <laughs> a little crooked. Josiah says, let's level it. He's afraid they're gonna push it over. Now the exciting part. Let's get that, there's the upper one. Or, I'm gonna feed it from that one. We'll exit with a hose down into the creek. We've got our hose connected. It's gonna be a jump here though. We're going up quite a bit. Pretty sure we have that much pressure. We open up our extended line. Water started coming here a little bit. And then we shut this off. And that's the only choice for the water now. I'm pretty sure it'll push it up through there so long as this plumbing holds up and there doesn't become too much pressure and it'll just pull this apart. Holy smokes, do I already hear it filling up? Yeah. Wow! So far, so good. And the idea is water in this line is always moving. It should not freeze. This line's draining out. And just how you got it running all the way to our creek? Uh, it's basically a creek, not yet. This will fill up. So this will always be full. When it fills up, it'll come out that PVC pipe. It'll never be less than this. Let's see if water is going through that ever flow. This is a good sign. Although that's not in the creek. <laughs> it's working. This is our drain line from the Everflow waterer. It needs to go into the creek. There. We got it from the creek up top. So whatever the animals don't use, 
This goes right back to the creek. Let's just double check to see that the tank is full. No surprise leaks. Oh look, we do have a problem. There's more water coming in than can go out. See, we got, we got an overflow. I think this is an easy fix. Full pressure over into here. What if we let some water by? Not all of it, but some. Is water still coming out here? We gotta make sure. Okay, see how forceful that is? That's way too much. So, if I let more go by, what happens? Yeah, look how, look how that pressure goes down. Oh, but it probably won't climb the hill. I think it'll choose to go this way instead of that way. Let's see if it'll climb the hill. Won't be coming in as fast. It don't need to be coming in as fast. Pigs don't drink that much. There's no water coming through. Really, Bobby, what we need to do is put a shot off up top, the tank, and regulate how fast it comes directly out of there. There's fully shut, okay? Do half shut. That's right. One hour later, maybe this will be the happy ending. Please, pretty please. So I got with me, you boys woke up in one cuddle. It's still rumbling over there. Please be running up here. I guess if an overflow water like this was this simple, somebody would have already done it. It's not dripping. We're gonna get water to run through it, and then we're gonna back down, back it down. I'm gonna shut this off. Water's gonna go up through there. Papa set you down in the wet. It's coming through? Uh -huh. Okay, tell me when it stops coming through. I'll open this up as minimum as I have to. Is it going, coming out just as strong? But it's less than it was? A little bit less. Okay. Yeah, that might be slow enough. Okay. Well, it's draining so far. So far, so good. All right, let's come back in a little bit and see that that tank is not overflowing. This could be some of the problem. It's winding and it's going over these logs. Let's make the exit. So much easier, even especially here at the top. It's different if we get it some momentum. There we go. That's better, right? Yeah. We've got some water coming out our main line. Do we have water coming out that? Yep. Yeah? Yeah, we do. Bring it up, we're gonna wind it up. See, it doesn't need to go down that hill and then back up. Yeah, perfect. Instead of winding it up, we could just take it down the, here, we just put it down there in the creek more. I think that's gonna work. I'm pretty confident that's gonna work. We'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out for sure. Hopefully the pigs are going in here tomorrow. I think there's water in that line. It's not overflowing. Oh, it's still working. <laughs> water coming in, water coming out. Heck yeah. Okay, we got an ever flow waterer for pigs. You got no water chores for 12 days, and then you move this, and then you got no more water chores for another 12 days. All right, watch out. Let's see if we can put the, uh, the ramp up.
They're doing their job. Look, they have already tilled. They're tilling this up, bringing up the ancient seed bed, and we can come in behind and, and plant choice seeds. Y'all are already doing it. <laughs> they won't let me hug them. Getting the pigs out to pasture and setting up the Everflow water was a huge accomplishment, a great stretch goal. It wasn't necessarily the one we were thinking of or definitely thinking of from the beginning. Let's get to clearing a road through the forest up to Grandma's. I want to clear this access road. It comes out up at Grandma. Henry! We got a crossroad. If you go down, that's super cool. This goes straight up behind Grandma's house. That little access was a stretch goal, but what a cool little trail. Hiking trail, access. Look where we are. Top of Grandma's. We did it. Meanwhile, Rebecca was hard at work designing the remodel. How'd your meeting with Austin go? Yeah, really good. We still haven't figured out this area yet, but yeah. he's gonna work on that. Yeah, he's got some homework, huh? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna get rid of the walk-in closet over here and we're gonna flip it over here. Okay. We're gonna put our bed this way, facing yeah. this way. Yeah, that makes sense, because then we have more access to the porch up there. Yes. We're still gonna do a sunroom. Right there, she's gonna have an arched roof out there. Arched roof like this. She can have a higher higher. So we can room. have a higher ceiling in the inside. Hopefully, it won't look like an addition. It won't, because we'll we're going to, because we're reciting. Okay. So, oh, okay. because we're reciting, it won't look like an addition. I think it makes the house look better. It's really exciting. Good. What we decided on today. That makes it real today. for you, I imagine. It does, because, like, it's just gonna be so good. It's just gonna be so good. You know what it's gonna make it real for me? What? The bank. I'm in charge of the dollar bills. That'll set it in motion for sure for me. It is afternoon. We are back from the bank. I believe we have our answer. We have a small equity line on this house already that we haven't used. I don't think it's enough. We can get a bigger one or more, but it affects, it affects the interest rate. And as you guys know, interest rates are crazy. I think it's one of those things where we're gonna make this work. We're just gonna hustle. We're just gonna earn. We're just gonna use what we have. We've done it before, we'll do it again. By day 89, we were down to our last trees and planning on saving the bigger trees for a later date when the graders could come and safely get them. Just this patch here, it's more than a day's work. I mean, it's more than an hour. I'm pretty sure, you think we could do it today? Yeah. You wanna go at that? Mountain Laurel Thicket? Yeah. Or do you want to kind of go at this area? Me. They're telling me they have a trick to pull them down without a saw. Hey, I don't even know if we need to clear this part, do we? Ow, ow, it's ow. so rugged. There's not going to be any yeah, crazing in here. To. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you okay? Bad crash. Are you alright? Yes. I know what that craziness is right there. It's a road. I can see the old logging road up there. Sometimes these crazy loggers 
would go straight up the mountain. It's the only explanation for this, this craziness, these mountains. There's a logging road right here. Oh, wow, look at that view. Now we're gonna be looking at stretch goals. Yeah, that's the old logging trail. That may be a stretch goal because I know that comes out just below our spring. Although I don't want to use this steepness to get there. Well, it could be a hiking trail. Got three left right there. Uh-oh, did you run out of fuel? That's, that's unfortunate. No, we brought it. Sally's way down there. We got those three trees, one there, and three there. We can count how many trees we have left. Seven or eight? That's not in our line. Fuel up, man, let's do it. Last tree of the two acres, which is probably three or four acres. Back up. That was it, huh? Right on the money. One minute to quit in time. I wonder if our, one of our stretch goals ought to be getting up some of these stumps with the machines we already have. Stump graveyard out here. What do y'all want for stretch goals? Pulling up stumps, thinning the steep parts. Jonah just said sit, have a tea. This old logging road right here. We could do that access road up there. We have to get one to where we can come up in here. The graders will help us with that. Hopefully they don't push us back till after the 100 days. Graders are coming and help us with these big trees. We need to come and mark all the ones with caution tape that we don't want them to cut Yeah, down. good idea. We're in the home stretch, five days left, and happy that we didn't have any accidents the whole way. Well, Josiah got a splinter. You okay? Yeah, I got a splinter into my fingernail. Oh, uh, that is a splinter. It goes almost all the way through your, across your entire nail. And I scratched my nose. Nicked my nose, some sort of branch. The nose was bleeding and I scratched my nose. Wait, I spoke too soon. We had this area that we had forgotten and we're going strong at clearing that. And then, we got a problem here. We got this tree, failed it, and it came off its stump and just hit right there and got caught up in the weed. Jonah says I should notch it at the bottom until it eventually comes down, so let's try that. <laughs> and made a big reflex and went flying back and the limb came flying down at you. I'm glad I had that helmet on. Dang. That's I'd be laying on the ground right now. I wear helmets. That limb fell out of the... Tree. That tree. It fell out of this one. And what was crazy is the trees were already fall, fell. And then the branch came. We're going to make sure... It is, it is sore. Wow, that's a big branch. Yeah, it got you. It got you pretty good. It bruised you. You know, it, there's, you're not bleeding. You got a big scrape though. I'm not gashed. No. I'm going to keep moving here or else I'm going to get really sore. I can tell you that right now. Got you a little on your arm too. It looks like down here on your, above your elbow. Just my, making sure I'm not numb with adrenaline. The lesson learned there, if, if, if it gets caught up in a branch, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it for the machines. Because the big machines are here and they're far away and they're in a cab. Yeah, that's why, that's why, that's one reason this can be so dangerous. Thankfully, it wasn't a break. I've recovered quickly and nobody has gotten seriously injured because it can be very dangerous work. I feel like we got one last paddock to conquer on this 100 day challenge. We kind of missed some stuff where the pigs were, but they helped us so that we can actually get in there. My shoulder is much better, much better, I'm shocked. I still don't want to like raise it up over my head or anything. We're gonna go right back to where I got injured and face the beast. Look at this branch that hit me yesterday. It's huge. It hit you over there. This is our area. Basically, right through here. I feel like it's, well it's a stretch goal, right? Well, I guess we kind of forgot this area until we missed this spot. The beautiful thing is, it's just a chainsaw. This is gonna, become usable pasture today.
After we finished tackling that last bit of pasture, we got the biggest surprise you could ever imagine. <laughs> yes! What's going on? Our truck load is here with my kid! What? Our truck load is here! Yeah! When did this happen? <laughs> Papa kept it a secret! Hey, tractor! Tractor! <laughs> wow, that, that was, was so big, cool! That was surprise! A big surprise. It was supposed know? to happen tomorrow. I don't care! <laughs> Did y'all hear really Jonah like, going nuts? No, I saw it and I came back. I <laughs> Jonah's reaction though. What was it? He just yeah. started screaming. The track loader's here. I yeah, saw it. And I was it like, wasn't right. supposed to happen till tomorrow. Did you know? It came early. So early. Brand new track loader. I dare you to find a speck of dirt. Right there. On the track. Oh. On the tracks. Of course it's on the track. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> Did you hear the reaction? The boys just went the same. Well, they didn't think it was coming until March. Yeah. There it is. I'm my triggers right here. So this is to drive it. That's forward. Forward, backward, sideways. And then this, this is, is for your bucket. That's up and that's all there is to out. it. I just got off the phone with the dealer. The mini X is coming tomorrow. It was supposed to be March or April. Yeah. It's gonna come tomorrow. <laughs> Super fun. These boys got up at 5.30 this morning. I couldn't sleep either. Why'd you guys get up? Because the track loader is here. <laughs> is it because the track loader is here or because the Mini X is coming today? Both. <laughs> Look what's here. It's here, my boys. We're gonna be pulling up some stumps now. Two buckets, big ones attached. We're gonna get some serious permaculture design done with this thing. Serious earthworks coming right up. First impression? It's really big. First impression? It's, it's pretty big, I guess. We're gonna get so much done with these two new machines. Jonah's turn. Josiah's going at it. Yes, you got it. It is day 100. I am so thrilled to share this moment with you. It's so cool to be at the end of something knowing that we just chipped away and you guys were there with us along the journey. If you missed that, this is part of a playlist. There's one through 99 days of coverage inside this playlist. Be sure to catch that. Let's go tour and see and go over the progress, how we've changed, what we've learned, and maybe even most importantly, what's next for this parcel of land. The rain has crippled us the last couple of days. This is the start of it. Uh, perspective. Our house is right through the woods there. This is the nearest acreage that we could clear. There's affection for land and there's love for land. You may appreciate beauty, you may get your breath taken away, your heart may sing over a piece of land, but you don't love it by true definition until you've worked the land. Love being laid down your life for another. This land's got a story right here. <laughs> Not such a good story. A limb fell out and busted my shoulder. Lesson learned. 
safety precautions put in place. This is my highlight. Getting the Everflow got water in. Listen to that. Just constantly screaming sustainability. Water is coming off the mountain 24-7, coming through here. You hear it always moving, coming in, coming out, and back down to the creek. Not gonna freeze. Water chores once a week on the pigs. That's gonna be my big memory of the 100 days. I've seen parts of my land I've never seen before. Josiah ran over a stump and got Sally stuck. We had Sean, our new friend, come and help us for the first time right over there. We've left these tall stumps. We knew that we were getting machines. We've got a track loader now, so part of what's next is to come in and pull up these roots. If we didn't have that, we could saw these down to the ground, but this is ready. You could, sunshine is getting in here now. May not look done, we still have some boughs to burn. These need to dry out before we can burn them. Hopefully by early spring, they'll be dried up enough to burn them. This is kind of fun. We're just walking here together. No pressure. I feel like sigh of relief after this is over. But what I was saying is sun can get in here now. This will grow up in grass. We would and could run animals into here and we will in the spring. Even if it's like it is, but we hope to touch it up. Uh, we're gonna have grapples for our track loader. We'll pile up these piles. Absolutely not necessary. You could burn these piles in separate piles. You could work them up into wood chips. Coming away from where we just were. This is nook and cranny farming, guys. We're in Western North Carolina. We have to take what we can get. Land is not for sale next to us or very expensive. If it was, twenty-seven to $50,000 an acre. We got to take what we can get, even if it's 30 degree slope. I remember working this field with my kids and having many a moment of this is precious. This is what we wanted. You can inherit or come upon or buy a field that's ready to graze. I'm telling you, it's not gonna be as precious till you get out there and work it. This field, once we graze, it's gonna be so much more precious because we built it together as a family. That's I'm a big fan of if you're starting a homestead to get raw land, build it up exactly how you want. Let it be your vision. Let it be your painting, your blank canvas. It took us so long to clear in the beginning and there were so many trees and it looked easy, but it wasn't. We came down and worked through here. I remember working this down. I remember uh, Mike Bacotti and his precious family came and we worked this huge section down in that area. This is a future struggle. You know, what is this? This is just like a crazy ravine. Cows and sheep can get on it. We can't necessarily get a <laughs> milk sled in here or uh, minerals, it's gonna be difficult. Look at this ravine. Perhaps culverts throughout and putting bridges throughout and smoothing this out with machines, but I mean, it's, it's ready. Sheep uh, and cows have full wheel drive. They could, they could get in here. We got some brush to clean up. Technically, we didn't completely clean up after ourselves. <laughs> Typical roads fashion for, for now. Lots of water on this property, lots of water. It might be a problem down here with this crazy ravine, but we've turned it into solution up at the top where we have tapped it. Running water going into a tank that builds up and can gravity feed this entire two acres. We found a logging road up there that is gonna loop and come down our main logging road. We cleared a logging road up to grandma's. Just discovering hiking possibilities and just appreciating and seeing the land. Seeing this view for the first time. Sure, these, there's these old shacks here and they will be go, that's part of what next, but just look at this view. You can see our field way over there that we, that we graze. It's just neat to take something we already had and open it up and make it something it wasn't and make it something very useful. Jonah and Josiah really stepped it up as men and really started to chainsaw over in here. Lily wanted a chainsaw too. And just like with the boys, we trained them first on Sawzall. And she would just get with it. She's putting in the work because she wants a horse and she knows we need more acreage to be able to feed a horse. And me wanting a cow and us having a united vision and coming together and saying, we, 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 we need more pasture. It was just a, fresh, a, a precious thing. It was fun setting up this yellow tape, giving markers and goals for the day. We weren't able to work on clearing every day, but 
We tried, and that's the key. Just look at this view. I just love it. And look how we've decorated the landscape with those pigs. They're just coming around and putzing around in that field, and it's just looking beautiful. There's life over here now that wasn't. Sean came again and showed us an electric chainsaw and how it worked, and that was fun to maybe see a glimpse of perhaps what the future may be in this kind of work. If the Everflow was my favorite event, this is my second favorite. We stumbled upon this spring, and somebody in the past has put some sort of feature here to be noticeable. Perhaps maybe it was a some sort of covert in this beat. But you know, it's fun to see the mysterious stories. What was that? We have this huge mound here that, did somebody mound this up in the past? Well, now with our machines, we can smooth this out and turn it into something that it's not. You know, I learned you can clear and make a land with machines and that's hiring it out for about $3,000 an acre. We would clear an acre we had because we could do it for 3,000. We're gonna be able to do it for less now that we have our own machines. But if you're in an area where we are where land is exponentially more than that and even not available, that makes sense all day long. We're gonna work up this wood. This is from a different project. I'll be excited to get on some of the other projects on the other part of the farm. This has kind of stole me away from some of my basic duties. I'll never forget going and visiting the Darties in Ohio and them opening up my mind to, it's okay to graze steep land. You rotationally graze it, it's good. If you have vegetation there, there's something there that eats it kind of mentality from them. All in all, I learned new skills. I learned how to sharpen a chainsaw with an electric chainsaw sharpener. I got more confident with that. Enjoyed working with our kids, bonded with them. Had we succeeded or not in the clearing of two acres, finding a road, tapping water is beside the point. The point is we were able to work consistently and together, good times and bad, as a family, and we bonded as a family. We fell in love with the land in the most truest sense of the word.